sound? Ah, all of the things I just said. Thank you. I've got a special button muting my mic, thanks to Paul's advice. But one of the things that you should remember when you've got a, a mic muting button is turn it off when you're going live, eh? You haven't missed much. Hello, I'm here. You can hear me. It would be good to lip read it all. It's going to be hard enough as it is, isn't it? What is going on? A monitor's gone off and all of the windows have crashed into this screen. I'm going to be trying to play Mage Knight today. Right now, that is looking more difficult than I even thought it was going to be. But hey, we will get through it, right? Because Mage Knight has a beautiful walkthrough that is easy for everyone to do, right? My chat has disappeared. My monitor has disappeared. But as long as you can hear and, see, hear and see me, it'll all be okay, won't it? Loud enough? It's looking all right? Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one thing to remember. Now I've got a mic mute button. Remember to turn that off. I thought I'll be, I'll be... I'll take precautions just in case I accidentally go live. I'll make sure that the microphone's muted in advance. But I've got, I've got my fancy button thing. Paul, Paul of Gaming Rules in the chat has been helping me work out some live streamy stuff. There's various things to get sorted. If you saw the stream for Dale of Merchants the other day, went pretty well. Hopefully things will be even better right now, including, is he there? I don't think you can really see him. We've got... Oh no, he's moved the camera. There's a camera on Marty, but he's moved it with his tail. It's not going to work out, is it? I've got an extra camera. So, Mage Knight. We are a Mage Knight in Mage Knight. Let's just zoom in. <gasps> zoom in in there. You can be several Mage Knights. There's four Mage Knights in the base game. I have gone with Arathea, or Shivana, if you're a LOL player. Lip syncs a little out. How out? Is it better than it was? I can change it. Yes, I have gone with Dominatrix Woman. Dragon Lady. I would think of her. I can change the mic a little bit. Is it, is it very off? Is it sound earlier than Vision? How would Bowie rate it? I've changed that a little bit there. I've tried to make it so that the... If you can see me in both cameras, I've tried to make the, the cameras look proper. Oh, good. That was, it's about an hour of setup today, was trying to make the mic sync with the, the different uh, cameras and things, because they're all plugged in different ways. They've got different lays, layers of lag on them. There's a lot of messing about that goes on into this. It's probably still a little bit out, because I was trying to sync it up. It's telling me how far out it is in frames, and the thing wants to know how far out it is in milliseconds. I think it is still a little bit out there, but hopefully it's quite close. Like, if you see... I don't think there will be a reason why you would see me in both cameras at the same time, but they're, they're pretty close to each other now. It's not like the other stream where they were pretty far out from each other. Get all of the various camera fastening things out of the way. Because I think we should. Can I put that over there and still see the chat? No, the chat goes away if I make it smaller. Well, we'll just need a window for the chat then, won't we? Because I've got myself my my walkthrough booklet that I can make up here. It just needs to be on a monitor that I can see, I would imagine. That's what you get. If you start, if you watch the audio, yeah, if you watch the audio, if you watch the stream right when it starts, you get to see the, the cacophony of chaos that... Sooner or later, it's going to be all sorted, isn't it? You don't have any of this stuff. Right. We are streamlabbing. Let's see. Can I get my lovely mouse come up? There it is. So that can come up at will when I need to show off what I'm actually doing in this. Because if you've... Oh, you've been through Mage Knight and... Yes, I'm playing four-player full conquest. All expansions turned on. I'm going to play through every solo campaign in the great big book that I saw on Board Game Geek. We're going to complete Mage Knight right now. No, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to do the most basic of things that I've done several times before. Hi, Callum. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone that is here. 
Uh, you started playing Mage Knight five times and never finished. Don't be ashamed. It's a crazy game. It's what probably, surely one of the heaviest games that I still like and want to try and <laughs> do well and understand and I can get to the point of learning the game and pretty much understanding what I'm doing whether I'm doing a good job of it or not who knows I remember we I've only I've mostly played it one player as a lot of people do it's a incredibly popular popular solo game uh, I did play it a, a couple of times I think back in the day with Rachel, I've played pretty much all of my games with. Co-op, it's pretty much an all-day affair doing a great big uh, co-op conquest of it. More patience than usually I have, but definitely more than Rachel has. So, this is pretty much a good place to be, isn't it? Because I think I am, I've gone past the setup stages of the walkthrough. I still have to reach behind me to find this mouse to flip between the, the windows here. But, if I turn my browser on... There it is. I am at the stage, after I've set all of the things up, of the first round of the game. You've already prepared the game in setup. Yes, I have. We need to choose tactics. Here's some tactics. This is what we are going to be picking between. And they basically can determine turn order and give you a bit of a leg up, a bit of extra powers and things to get you started. So if you just want to be the early bird, you want to go definitely first in this, because although this is solo, there is a dummy player. Where's he hanging out? There he is, Goldix. He has to be zoomed quite far in because he's right next to the edge of the camera. Uh, but Goldix is basically a timer. He's going to be getting in the way a little bit, just worrying me, basically. Worrying that I won't get enough time to do what I want before well, time runs out, and he forces the end of the round. Uh, it's... Two days and two nights, right? In this game. So there's some night tactics as well that we don't need yet. A lot of the stuff, I'm not even supposed to have these advanced actions set up yet. A lot of it you just have in the stacks. I needed to make sure the camera could look at them all. We won't look at them yet. You have a few units out and stuff, but this is a great way of learning the game. And I've definitely used videos as well. I've watched Paul's tutorial videos plenty, Ricky Royal. Def right from the beginning, uh, Ricky Royal's tutorial was a go-to, and Beyond Solitaire as well. I'm sure uh, I should have been watching all of them in preparation for this morning, but syncing video takes more time than it should, I feel. So, the first thing I need to do is pick one of these six cards, give me a bit of a special power, and then in the solo rules, Goldix is going to take one of these at random, and another change for Solo is that these cards will start disappearing from the game. So the card that you choose today, and the one Goldix takes, they're going to be removed from the game if we took those two. And so on the second day, we wouldn't have those to choose from at all. We do get to see our starting hand here. We've got five cards. All of the Mage Knights have their own decks, but almost all of the cards are the same in them. There are two cards that are different. I've got one of them here, my Battle Versatility, which just, I've, I've got a few varied ways of attacking. Hi Hat Tough Games, good morning US. I promise at some point I will do one later in the day. Two o'clock just seems like a perfect time when I'm about, but I know that, yeah, it's not, it's not an ideal time for anyone, is it? One day, we'll just do one at like nine o'clock or something like that, P in the PM. So it'll be right in the middle of the day. So, the things I have, can you see all of the text and stuff here? Hopefully this text is all big enough. I know a couple of these cards over here, it'll be a little bit too small, but I've got a camera for that, don't worry about that. So I can just go first. I've got early bird. I can take rethink. I might not get a chance to go first. But if I take this tactic, I can discard up to three cards from my hand and draw that many cards. Shuffle your discard pile back into your deck. So if I really want to particularly do something and I haven't drawn the cards that I want to do that yet, I could cycle some of them through there. I don't feel like I'm going to do that. Mana Steel. When you take this tactic, take a mana die of a basic colour from the source and put it on this card. We'll be getting into all of this mana and source and all of this business. Uh, you can use that mana on any of your turns this day. And if you do, re-roll it at the end of that turn and put it back in the source. Where is the source? There should be a button that takes us there. Here is the source. 
We haven't got dice. Oh, let me grab my box. In my efforts to stop Marty the Cat completely destroying all of the things, I took everything I didn't think I needed out of the room. But it turns out, you need dice in this. So the source, it has two plus the number of players. Yeah, I need some uh, music for when I inevitably need to run out of here. Yeah, everything's been planned for, hasn't it? You need, I think I need about 24 hours of preparation before I actually go live. So you roll these at the start of a daystroke night, and this helps you when you play your cards to use some mana to have a more powerful effect. So if we look at my cards here, when I play them, say March, pretty simple one, I can play this to move two. But if I spend some green mana, I can move four. Each round, you can, each turn, you can use a die from the source as a mana. So right now I have two red mana, and unfortunately I've rolled a black, which in the day, that's basically a dud die now. That just stays there. But I've got some red cards, like my lovely attacking cards. That could be useful. So mana steal lets me take one of those dice and store it for me. So no one would be able to take that away from me in a, in a multiplayer game. And potentially I would be able to use some extra mana. Oh, breath from finding that die. I can take planning. At the end of each turn, if you have at least two cards in your hand before you draw, draw as if your hand limit is one higher. So here we're getting into the more likely to go second, but that's quite a good power, basically an extra card in your hand for this entire day. Great start, when you take this immediately draw two cards, and the right moment, so guarantee that I would go second. One time this day during your turn, you can announce that you will take another turn immediately after this. And if you do flip this card face down, so that might be necessary if Goldix goes really quickly. I do like the idea though, if, if I keep a few cards in my hand, I could draw as if my hand limit was one higher, so I would have six cards basically. Not right now, but throughout the rest of the day. I think it's between that or Great Start. Let's get rid of all of these other ones, but Goldix is going to take one, isn't he? Let's, let's draw as if I had one higher hand limit. Remember, I'm pretty... <laughs> I, I don't exactly know the best strategies and the best starters and stuff for this. I'm sure there are forum posts of plenty on BoardGameGeek of people's theories and session reports and stuff. I have started to say, I have uh, learned this game at least... I think this is about the fourth time I've gone back to the beginning and gone through the walkthrough to try and relearn it because I leave it too long between plays. I got this late last year, I think, and got all excited that oh, I'm going to get Mage Knight again. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to get expansions. I'm going to stick to it this time and we'll see everything. But it doesn't quite work out that way. Goldix has drawn, let's make sure it's on camera, rethink. So that is going to go from the game and Goldix is going to go first. But I have my planning. I have my extra draw limit for the rest of the day. We don't need these now until the following day, which is in a couple of rounds time, because it'll be night next. So, this is the point where I'd usually pause for a breath and edit all of this out later, but it's live, we've got to be in a panic. So we can switch back to the browser and lean back and try and find my mouse. Here it is. So, taking turns in a multiplayer game, once you've picked your tactics and stuff you start playing so take your turn play some cards from your hand do the things that it says on them and then next player starts taking their turn in a multiplayer game as well you might have a load of cleanup and stuff that you need to sort out player can go while you're doing all that we don't have to worry about annoying the next player though in a solo game and if a player has no cards in their deed deck at the start of their turn they can either play with what they have or they can announce the end of the round and if they do, their turn immediately ends. And everyone else gets one last turn. So, there is an extra thing here. And if I can just find the page and grab the other camera. There is a dummy player that is active for the solo scenarios and the cooperative ones as well. It's going to be in the right place here. I need to turn that browser off. Here he is, the dummy player. 
This is why we are playing with uh, Golix. He hasn't got a Mage Knight. He's not going to do anything. He's basically a timer. We just find another player, and every player has some mana at the bottom of their card here. See these three colors? This just matters if they are the dummy player. They get a crystal of those colors. So Golix has got two greens and a blue. And when it comes to the dummy player's turn, see, when you pick tactics, scenarios might have different rules for them. In this, it's shuffle them, they pick another one, they are removed from the game at the end of the day. And he doesn't use any of it, just like he doesn't use anything. Hi, Tobias. Sorry, you can't say, you can watch it after. Yes, you've already, you're two steps ahead of me. I've already even finished reading the sentence. Yes, what, everyone can watch afterwards. But hey, watch now if you can. Uh, so when it's the dummy player's turn, if his deed deck is empty, he will announce one more turn. He will announce the end of the round. So he is a danger, basically. He can stop me from stalling, drawing out more cards, trying to get all of the perfect things that I might want to do. The round can end from underneath me. Hi, gaming rules, people. I hope you've come from Slack. You can educate me on my uh, Mage Knight noobness. So if his deed deck is not empty, which it isn't, and it's his turn, we need to flip over three cards from his deed deck and put them in his discard pile. Check the colour of the last card. If he has got no crystals of that colour, his turn's over. But if he's got crystals of that colour, flip over additional cards, as many as he has crystals of that colour, and then his turn is over. And throughout the course of the game, over the end of each round, he will get more and more crystals on that card. So if we flip back over to him, where is he? Here he is. He's a bit blurry, but he's very zoomed in. So he discards three cards. One, two, three. And he has discarded Promise, which is a white card. So if he had some white mana on here, he would keep drawing cards. And he hasn't, though. He's got green and blue. So he is just going to stop. So yeah, there we go. We've got a bit more time here. We've got uh, a bit of a breather to take. Paul, did you... You were involved... This is before you were involved professionally with um, CG and stuff, wasn't it? You were a big Mage Knight fan. So were you involved back in the original rulebook and stuff? How were you involved? Paul later designed expansions as well which if we keep this up now and remember how to play mage knight we'll eventually get to those expansions there's the lost legion a great big scary box just like mage knight and then there is krang the character who i maybe i should have played with but we'll keep to the basics for this string and then shades of tesla as well they've all got special scenarios and stuff in oh, so much mage knight to do so he's had his turn now it's over to me and if I turn the browser back on, there it is. One turn. So I won't go through, I won't just read it all out to you. But each turn has got two parts. First, can you see my map and stuff? Yes. First, you have got to move one or more spaces. Then, depending on where you end up, you can perform an action. Either combat or interacting with the space that you're on. You can either move and then fight or interact, stay where you are and fight or interact, or move and do nothing there, or do nothing. But you can't, you know, interrupt your movement with doing stuff. You can't fight and then move, and you can't fight and interact. You've got to do it over multiple turns. And for us, and in the multiplayer game as well, there are other players perhaps rushing you along in a multiplayer game. But for us, we've got Goldix terrifying us that the game might end underneath. And the action cards, as I mentioned, Tells you the name and all of that, but the effect here, the colour determines what mana you need to do its special ability. And only by spending that or a crystal or something can you do that more powerful thing. But it's not just as simple as the cards all have just their ability on them and that's that. Because you can get around that. You can play cards sideways. So if I really, really want to move, say, and we can see in my player area, just switch to. I haven't really got that much movement here. I've just got move two. Yeah, not really a lot of movement at all. I need to get to places, I suppose. But if I desperately needed a bit more movement, I can play cards sideways. Every card, except wounds, which we might get later, you can play 
as movement, influence, attack, or block. Get to all of that and what all of that means. The walkthrough will take us through all of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I could get move three without spending any mana just by doing that. And yeah, maybe I should have uh, drawn some extra cards or something like that. So yeah, playing cards sideways, special cards. Movement, which is what we're going to have to do because I am on a space over here. There's nothing on it. This, well, this is just the portal where you enter the map. I'm going to have to go somewhere to do something. Now in the walkthrough, this is all prescribed, the, the order that things come out. We start on tile A and then the tiles are numbered one and two. And the stack of tiles is all in order as well because it will introduce these new elements in the same order they're going to be shown to you in the walkthrough. It's a fantastic way of learning a pretty difficult, uh, intricate game. So that's how we've got these two rampaging orcs here. There were spaces for them. We drew them from the tiles. They've got all sorts of things on them that we'll deal with when we get there. We've got some villages we can go to. We've got some mines and things. So much to deal with. So movement costs. It tells us on the source over here how much it costs to go to a space. These grey numbers here tell you how much it's going to cost at night. So at night, the desert's a bit cooler, costs a bit less. You can't see in the forest, it costs a bit more. Is that the idea behind it? I think it is. Oh, wow. E easiest to learn, oh, between Mage Knight and on Mars. Mage Knight, yes. I would, I would say that, yeah. Purple does rule. What is going on? I'm missing all of this chat. I, w I feel like I would be bad. I am bad at this game as well. When you play just solo all the time, I suppose like with just score, it, there's a score to compare to and you can go and look it up. But I tend to just go, okay, that's the score. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just stick with that. So if I want to go through all of these spaces, it's going to cost me movement that I haven't started with really. But in Mage Knight, as with a lot of uh, lovely heavy games, like Vital Assert games, there are usually ways around the stuff that you are missing. So do we need to know anything else before we move? There are portal spaces. Yeah, this is just at the start. There's the ramp rampaging enemies, like rampaging enemies that I can go up to. I'm probably going to have to have a turn where I don't do that much. There's a special rule. Every time you reveal a new tile, you gain a fame. Oh yeah, it costs you uh, two movement over here. Look at the source, not the map. It costs you two movement to go into a city, doesn't it? But it's also two to reveal a new tile. Like if you are stood at the edge of the map, and for this scenario at least, the map is a wedge. So we can't have stuff over here. This is all where the water is. But the map is going to build out and out from this point. We'll have to use this zoom out a little bit to see all of it. So I can go over here and earn fame, which if we go to the reputation board, it's all experience. And as I earn fame from revealing new tiles, from killing monsters, things like that, I will gain fame, which will level me up, give me more cards, give me more abilities, let me command more units. There's loads of stuff that we can do. So before we get to any of this other stuff, interacting in a village and units and all of that good stuff, we've got to get there first. And at the moment, based on what I've got in my hand, that's not a lot, is it? Hi Kyle. Yeah, I'm not particularly bothered about the score. Like, I <laughs> say, say that at the end of a lot of solo playthroughs that I end up with this score, and if, if I can remember my other scores, that's cool, I can compare it to something, but usually I haven't really got much context to that, unless there's a kind of table for... This is, this is a good score. But in Mage Knight, it's all about, it's all about the friends we made along the way, isn't it? It's just all about the, the experience, isn't it? And all of these amazing cards that you ended up with, all of these units that are now under your control. So, over here, I'm not going to get to attack anything, am I? I'm miles away from anything, and I've got to get about. The cards that I have are March can move me two. It can move me four if I play some green mana. But, yeah, there's no green mana in the source. I don't have any crystals or something. Mana draw, I can use an additional mana die from the source. We might have to... This is going to end up using a load of cards here. There is... 
concentration here can get me a blue, white, or red mana token, which would be great for fighting if I want to save it for that. I could gain a white and then use mana draw. Let's take a mana die from the source and set it to any color except gold. This is very small writing on this. Uh, gain two mana tokens of that color. Do not re-roll this die when you return it to the source. Yeah, I feel now that I should have drawn two more cards because I'm going to have to spend a turn doing not very much, really, haven't I? Uh, but yeah, I, I can kind of get around it, maybe get the white token, use the mana draw. But tokens are temporary things. You don't get to keep the tokens. There's, there's crystals and tokens. Tokens you need to use the same turn, right? And crystals can stick around for a long time. So... I'm going to have to be a bit stuck on. I, I might have to work my way around this kind of zone here. So I could go straight into the forest by moving three, play a move two, and then something else. But yeah, I should have judged my stars a little bit better. And drawn some more cards. I'll get to draw more cards later, though. So we could look at the enemies that I'm going to be fighting here. If I flip back to the... To the back of the rulebook here, this tells you kind of a quick reference as to what all of these things mean that are on the enemies. So we can look at the Rampaging Orc here. We'll get into more of it when you fight them, but you basically need to get through their resistance. You'll get fame for it. They've got special abilities. They're swift. You need to, you need more to block against them. This one here, to fight him, you have to fight... It's got a summon attack. So he draws an extra enemy that we don't know about before we get to anything. It's the village and plunder. Are we going to be despicable? A despicable mage knight in this. I think maybe... What, what would I want to get rid of out of my hand? Definitely March 2. That's going to move me a little bit. Maybe I save these for some big attack against something. This mana draw would be great for using extra dice, but they're all set, and they're all, all set to red, which I do need. But then again, I've got concentration that would let me use mana tokens. Maybe that would be better to save. I do like concentration's other ability, if that's focusing at all. When you play this, play another action card with it and get the stronger effect of that action for free. And if it gives you move, influence, block, or any other kind of attack, gain that amount plus two. can be brilliant later on as well when you've got all of these kind of fire attacks and fire block and stuff that you have to deal with. Yeah, there's crazy things will happen. I think definitely play the move two. And I think I'm going to do... Maybe I'll do mana draw at the moment as a plus one so you can play any card sideways as a move one and then they would be the two cards that go into my discard pile and I would get to move the three that it takes to go into the forest three to move into a forest space so I would end up just doing nothing there we do have we've got a load of as well as the walkthrough and everything else you have these reference cards for everything I am next to some crystal mines but it would, cost, it would cost three movement to move there from here. If you end your turn here, gain a mana crystal of that color into your inventory. And crystals stick around. Yeah, I, I could have, as Paul said, I could have gone into that mine. But you know, you've only got a finite amount of cards as well. So you can end up doing great big things. But you've got to always be aware of... Uh, just cycling through your cards and ending up with nothing. You'll be the one declaring the end of the round. Hi, Ricky. Another Mage Knight Maestro, Ricky Royal, in the chat. I'm going to need some luck. I've gone wrong a little bit. So, if we go back to my browsing, at the end of your turn, is that over here? At the end of your turn, discard all the cards you played, face up to your discard pile. See all of that? Yep. Yeah. Return all used or unused mana tokens to the bank. Keep only crystals. Yeah, so it's t every turn you lose the tokens. 
and then draw cards up to your hand limit. It's five, but it can increase as you get more fame. And thanks to my tactics, it's got uh, temporarily bigger. So I can see, you see on my player here, at the start of the game, my limit is five. I've got two armor, but my hand limit is five. And later on, as I level up, I can start to increase that. Start to block some more damage, which you'll need to because you'll be fighting terrifying things. But I can get bigger and bigger hand limits. So I need to draw up, don't I? Because I've got planning. At the end of my turn, if I have at least two cards in my hand before I draw, draw as if your hand limit was one higher. Two, three. There we go. So I've got some... I'm a bit limited still on the... Uh, the mana that's available, because until I use some mana in the source, it's just going to stay as those two reds. And it's a bit of a shame you know, to lose the, the black mana so early. So I can gain white tokens for next turn. And oh, mind you, the bottom of swiftness just gives me ranged attack, which, as, as good as that is, it's not going to work at this kind of range. It's good. You still have to go there to actually fight the people. Let me take a breath and have a nice drink. I made this all warm. <laughs> it would be nice with a Star Trek theme. I like the Star Trek one. And I'm a Star Trek noob. Right, we need to go to Dummy. What's Dummy doing? He is playing three of his cards, isn't he? I'm trying to look at... Oh, there. Yeah, I can see his discard pile now. His third card, unfortunately for me, is a green... Which means, oh dear, that's two more cards. Now, it doesn't matter that he's only got, he's got a green again at the end of that. He doesn't keep drawing cards and we're going to, you know, cycle through his entire deck. He stops there still. Video a little bright. Is it when it's zoomed in in this or is it in general? Goldix is really zoomed in. That's all the green cards gone now. That would be nice. Because no, I want to know all of this stuff because, yeah, I'm just fiddling about with all of the settings. I think it's a big leg up from the first stream the other day, but this is still only the second proper zoom in one. Yeah, like zoomed in on, like zoomed into this degree, do you think? Or just like Gold Goldix is a bit too zoomed in. It's because he's so far on the edge of the frame. That if I zoom in too much, you just get a load of darkness over at the side. But he, could, he probably could have been brought in further as well until the map gets bigger. It will, take, it will end up taking up a load of space eventually, but not right now. So we can worry a little bit that Goldix has advanced us on, but he's still got, you know, he's still got a deck. He's still got something to worry about there. So let's see, let's... Let's move the battles over to the side. So I've got swiftness now that will let me move along. Yeah, like like the white cards and things. And it depends where they are on the table as well. Like the the ones on the left side. I've, I've made the, not the mistake, I wanted the cards sleeved. But uh, when dealing with all of these bright lights and stuff, you have to mess about with things for ages to stop... The thing just glaring back. Although I am about to film a playthrough on uh, Monday that's a prototype with a load of sleeve cards. So I'm glad that everything's in this position right now. So movement. I have swiftness that would give me move two. Its bottom ability isn't going to help me move. We have improvisation. Discard another card from your hand to get movement three or influence attack or block three. And if I spend some red mana, which we are... We've, it's plentiful. We've got two red mana die in the source, dice. And uh, so that could give us five of anything. But I do need to lose another card to do that. But I can f I fight them from the, the next space, don't I? So I could go over to a village. Shall we have a look at villages? Get that rule book up. The walkthrough. So I could make my way to a village. What do you do at villages? Loads of things. You can recruit things. So you can get uh, discounts based on your reputation or if you're 
a big scary bad guy they don't want to talk to you and uh if, if it's got it'll either increase the cost of the reputation that you need to spend or they won't even you know deal with you if you've gone to a certain point here if you've committed so many bad things they're not even going to talk to you anymore but we do have where is the Oh, there are so many buttons. The source tells you where the units are. I should say source stroke unit. We can recruit things over here. We need influence to do that. If we want to go over to a village and get some herbalists, maybe, or some peasants that give you basically extra actions. You use them up when you do that. But it could let us do some extra things. And as Michael mentioned earlier, we can plunder a village. I know pointing, pointing at you, pointing at the webcam isn't going to help us much. Pointing at the monitor. Uh, you can plunder a village. If you end your turn there, so we can still do our stuff there. If you end your turn on a village, you can plunder it, give you minus one reputation, but draw two cards and strengthen your next turn. It doesn't affect the village, but if we're willing to take the hit on reputation, and I don't think we've... Then no, we haven't got anything that would really hurt our reputation yet. I think that's another mage knight, actually, that's got a card that they can play to be a bit more powerful. Ah, yes. Compi cube. If, uh, if you try and... So it's if you move into the village, so, yeah, wherever I go, look at the map, as soon as I'm in range of an enemy, if I try to move away from them, they can attack me, right? And then if I moved out of it later, they could potentially both attack me. I think, I think we, need to, we need to show these orcs who's boss, really, don't we? Have we got orcs in the walkthrough? Here we go. Combat. So here we go. The so <laughs> what I was looking for on the back of the rulebook. Let's take a look at enemy tokens. So the number on the top is the armor of the enemy, and you might have extra symbols and stuff. So you need this much attack to defeat the enemy. The number on the left is the attack, and it's how much damage it's going to do to you, how much block you need. So I do have that built-in block. I've got two built-in blocks. Uh, and they might have, they will have some more scary, intricate attacks later on. On the right, they might have special abilities, and they might have some special defensive abilities. And the bottom is the amount of fame, the amount of XP we'll get. To fight these orcs, we have to be on a space adjacent to the enemy token. You announce that you want to challenge the enemy, and the combat begins. It counts as your action. Remember, you can only fight or interact. And if you manage to defeat them, you'll gain a reputation because they are rampaging enemies. They're out here rampaging, terrifying the locals in these villages, and they will very much appreciate you taking care of them. So, we can decide which one to do. So I've got two of these orcs. Are the orcs not set up correctly? Oh, he's supposed to be over there. Ah, okay. Yeah, this, this orc's ch just chilling out in a magical glade over here. So this one's further away. So I can, I can work my way into the village that way, can't I? But um, but if I try to go out of here later, then that orc could attack me. But I could attack the orc in a future turn from the village, couldn't I? So I'd, I'd have to wind my way that way. Or I can just walk there and fight the orc. So we can look at what is going to happen here. It attacking me would... He would do three damage to me. I do have... Two block at level one. So I would have to generate a block from somewhere. Or oh no, that's not the way it works. Is it? That's that has to do with um the wounds that you take. I would need to generate three block. He's got four defense, so I'd need to do four damage on him, but he's got Swift. To block him, you need twice as much block as its attack value. So I would need to block six. To stop taking damage from him. Hmm. I, I probably can do that, though, with all of the stuff that I've got here. So I, can move to, I can move to the village the safe way, and then interact with the village or provoke the orc. So I'm, I'm on there. Remember that I, I, I'm just moving myself as a thought experiment, but I am in that forest, aren't I? Just thinking that... I don't need to... Play, if I just go up to him with swiftness... I don't then need to spend anything else to move me. But I could, you know, I have the improvisation. There is red mana about. 
I could use this to move. It would discard another card, though. I could use this to move. Uh, you know, discard another card from your hand to get move five. And then play something sideways, and that would get me over there. But yeah, ranged attack. Attacks before, you, before they even block, doesn't it? Let's bring up Dr. Rulebook over here. Because there are phases in combat. There is ranged and siege attacks. In the first phase of combat, you have a chance to eliminate enemies before they get to you, but only if you have ranged or siege attacks. If you eliminate all enemies in this phase, the combat is over. So, their armor, what is their armor? It changes the screen for you, but then it doesn't change it for me. I can, yes, very, very good point. All of you. I have all of this ranged attack, don't I? Like, swiftness, I need white mana for, but I have concentration that can get me a white mana token. But then I have, as well, my battle versatility. If I use red mana for this, it can generate me ranged attack three as well. Okay, so I would need to do both of those, right? Or, or I can just do the bottom of swiftness and not bother using any mana. I can just do the ranged attack one. But if I use a red mana, it would re-roll a die. Using the mana means it's potentially something else next turn, rather than just having two red out here. But having two red out here is quite useful because I've got a lot of red cards. So either way, we, we need both, don't we? So that means... Oh, I do also have Crystal Eyes. When you play this, play, pay, pay a mana of a basic colour and gain a Crystal of that colour. So that's something good to keep later. Because I could, I could play Crystal Eyes as well and... get a red Crystal in to re-roll that die if I really wanted to. For a future turn. So Concentration I'm going to have to use to gain a blue, white, or red mana token. So I'll play that and gain myself a white mana token. The difference, if I remember correctly, isn't the difference like it's a, it's a token if it's just off to the side and it's a crystal if it goes in your nice little area over here. Crystals you can keep between turns, but uh, tokens you can't. So I'll play that to get the token. And, I mean, there's only one uh, thing bouncing in the old audio over here. Is it only outputting one channel? Just noticed this. Because might not. Uh... I'm right about mana versus crystals. Good. Let's get this over into this window. Because the multiple monitor thing, again, isn't quite working out. Having, having two monitors that aren't the same resolution really causes uh, some problems. What if I, audio input, is that going to fix things? There we go. Checked right away. Uh, down mix to mono. I've only got one microphone here. There is no special stereo effect of this. Where are we? So bottom of swiftness, top of battle versatility. Yep, that's what we were doing, wasn't it? I generated the token to do my swiftness, so it'll get ranged attack three. Battle versatility will be ranged attack one. And then I can... It costs four, doesn't it, to get to the village. So, improvisation to move to the village. Oh yeah, I can discard something else, can't I, and do move five. Could I just... Because uh, I still need movement to get to the orc in the first place, don't I? So I could discard, say... So I've already played concentration. Get that out of the way. I'm already playing these two as well. I haven't used a mana yet. I think, I feel like I want to keep hold of maybe an attack card, or maybe Crystallize is going to be good to get me more mana. I want two cards in my hand though, it's going to be a shame that I'm not going to have two cards. I'm going to have to spend a mana from the source, I think, so I can move five, so I can move to the village, avoid in the orc, avoid in this lovely orc. But if I switch to you can see. Oh yeah, Paul got to get ready for his stream tonight, playing Pavlov's, Pavlov's house. Pavlov's, Pavlo, Pavlov's dog joke not coming to mind. 
Uh, but yeah, when, what time is that, Paul? Plug it. You've got, to go, you've got to do a repair on the kid's Lego car. Oh, who's, who's going to help me with what to do? I need advice. I think, though, we've got a good move here. So I'm moving around, and my action for the turn is generating all of this ranged attack, isn't it? So I need to discard another card. I'm going to discard Crystallize to play um, Improvisation. So I have to discard another card. And then I've got all of this ranged attack. I've got ranged attack six right now. So combat initiates in the very first phase of uh, the ranged stroke siege attacks. I've done six attack. Before it knows what's happening, it's taken care of. The fact that it's swift and I would need extra block and stuff doesn't matter because it's taken out in that first phase of combat. So I'm going to get myself three fame. Which, which button takes me there? This one. One, two, three fame. And a reputation for taking out a Rampaging Orc, which we need to pop in the discard pile above there. So nothing on that space anymore. And then we got to sort out... Come on, rulebook. Over here, move your shield token up the reputation track, unless you're already on the... Oh yeah, reputation track goes up to the supply phase. So we'll see more of uh, assigning damage and blocking and stuff later on. As I attack other things, but this one worked out pretty well. There's healing, there's resting. What about... Oh, let's start now. I'm not even supposed to have started. Revealing new tiles we don't need. Spoiling all of these things. What about level ups? If a hero gains enough fame that their shield on the fame track crosses the end of a row, they advance to the next level. A hero can't level up past 10. They go to the end of the last row, keep tracking them, because points at the end as well. They're not handled immediately, but do so after you announce the end of your turn, before you draw new cards. Okay, so this is now. Now, So I have leveled up. The first one is uh, advanced cards and skill one, isn't it? So the when the first player gains a level, this is just for the uh, introductory mission. You don't have any cards out, so now reveal three cards from the advanced action deck. And display them in a column subsequent games this will be available from the start i have gained a skill level up so second row on the track has this symbol and it means you're going to get a skill token and an advanced action card getting to level two first player to do this reveals two skill tokens from the top of their skill pile and choose one get it and then put it in the skill offer and then we're going to get to choose one of these three advanced action cards when another player reaches level two they resolve their level up in the same one. So, I need to flip back to Streamlabs so I can see stuff. I need to look over here at these advanced actions, which I don't know if they're going to be zoomed in enough at all to see all of this. We can go to zoomed in more camera, see these things. We've got as possibilities learning, magic talent, and agility. They are the available cards. And I need to draw two of my skills and the choice of the combination of these is going to decide what I take. Where is my... I have a special player aid as well that tells me what my token do. So I can have Burning Power. This will either give me Siege Attack 1 or Fire Siege Attack 1. Especially, you know, siege attacks count as ranged attacks as well. But certain things are fortified and they need siege attacks to get through to them. And I can also have dark negotiation. Once a turn, influence two if it's the day, or influence three if it's the night. Now, the fact that next turn I'm standing in a village and could do stuff in there makes me kind of think maybe I want some influence, but more attack and ranged siege attack at that pretty attractive but let's look at the cards here so we have influence two once during your turn you can pay influence to gain an advanced action to your discard pile so you wouldn't get to use it till the next round but get more and more of them and then influence four uh you can pay influence once during this turn you can pay influence nine to gain an advanced action card to your hand magic talent 
Discard a card from your hand. You can pay, you can play one spell card from the spell offer as if it was in your hand. Spells we haven't even got to yet. You need uh, mage towers to be able to go and get them. When you play this, play a mana of any color, gain a spell card of that color, and put it in your discard pile. And then agility. Move two. During combat this turn, you can spend move points left over as attack points one for one. Or if you spend some mana, move four. And then you can use move points left over, one for one, or two move points for a ranged attack. I kind of feel all attacky. I want to go for you know, siege attacks and agility. What do you reckon? What should the, the choice be? I do like the idea of getting more spells, getting more advanced actions. Seems really cool as well. But early on, getting some more movement, getting to convert extra movement into more attack seems really, really good. I like all of this stuff, but we flip through. Where does it go? It goes into my... I can use the skill straight away. And it goes on top of my deck. I do get to use it. Hmm. Should we do some influence and get some more cards, maybe? I feel like they they make sense as skill stroke card combinations. Hi, Clever Swine. This is solo with a dummy player. Goldix is not really rushed us about that much. Magic talent's really fun. So discard a card from your hand, you can play a card from the spell offer as if it's in your hand. Where it is. I suppose getting access to all of these things. We went for magic talents. We could, we could still go for some attack as well. Go some influence again, since we are stood in a village. We are ready to go to a village next turn. And spend some influence here to maybe recruit some people. If we want to do that, we don't have to. Maybe that would be the thing to go for. There's that other camera. Getting used to all of these buttons. Yeah, magic talent, does it, maybe... I've, I've never gone magic talent before. I've definitely gone agility before. I like spending excess uh, movement to attack things. Maybe I will go for some more influence because I'm stood on a village and I'll go for magic talent because it's apparently really fun. It seems pretty fun. So I, I assume now that's going to go on top of my deck and it's good that we do the... This is why you do the skill thing now, because that's going to be one of the next cards that you draw. So the skill I take goes here, and I can just use that now. That's just the thing that I do. The other one goes into the common offer. So, you know, in a multiplayer game, other people would be able to choose from your uh, skills when they level up. Is there something for the dummy player when we level up? You get, to, you get to choose one of those as well. Skills in a solo game. Uh, choose his skills, shuffle them. I've done all of that. Every time we gain a skill, reveal just one from his. I'm putting it in the common offer. It's available to you next time. So, Goldix has a skill that he has revealed, which is Blight. Once a round, flip this to an adjacent space for free, or... To move two spaces for two movement points, you must end this move in a safe space. It does not provoke rampaging enemies. Wow. That is really cool. I think my aversion to green has stopped me ever playing Goldix, but <laughs> that seems really, really cool. Every, all of the Mage Knights, though, have got um, crazy good abilities. I need to clear out my player area, don't I? I have played all of these cards. Mana token is spent and don't stick around anyway. And I need to re-roll this and put it in the source. <laughs> Unfortunately, in the daytime, that is the worst thing that can happen. Because <laughs> now in the source, I just got that right. <laughs> the, the die is gone, I believe. I'm going to have to scroll back some way in the walkthrough until it, uh, it's telling me about mana dice again. But yeah, black mana makes you, allows you to do really powerful spells at night. If a mana die is rolled and comes up black, no one can use it and it's not re-rolled, it is a depleted mana die. Oh dear. <laughs> You've only got um, three to begin with. That's, uh, that's pretty rough, isn't it? So, <laughs> we're, st we're again stuck with only uh, red 
mana in the source. Let's go to my player area. I do get to draw some cards back up now, though. Unfortunately, planning does not kick in. I did not have at least two cards in my hand before I draw. Uh, so I need to draw up. And I think this would be a time now where it's going to show us spells. I think this view will show us some spells. Every time you watch a playthrough of this game, you want to play it. Yeah, it's, it is one of those, isn't it? I'm sure that when I bought it back, it was, uh, it was watching one of Paul's playthroughs of it. And um, if fighting with, what, what's you? Oh, and of all these guys and Jaws of the Lion. That is a pretty formidable lineup. Uh, and for the future, oh yes, if we take Goldix's skill, you have to take the bottom card from the offer. And me moving the me moving the cards to show you them on the other camera. I should do that one at a time in the future because I have definitely jumbled them out of order. Because another thing that. I'm not thinking about right now, but that can play into your decision here is it's the bottom cards, right, that are here at the end of the round will influence the mana crystals that Goldix gets to you know, make it more likely that he will cycle through cards. So, yeah, you, you can choose cards based on that as well, that, oh, I don't want him to get an extra red crystal, for example, I'm going to take this card away. These are all red spells, though, that have come out. Well, that's good, because apparently, at the moment, <laughs> the only mana that the source wants to give us is red. So it's probably good that all of these red spells are out. So can we see the text from those spells from there? I've got... So the night abilities, we, we can read if this comes up at night. Because we don't actually get these spells, but I can discard a card from my hand to play one of these as if it was in my hand. So I would need to play red mana, which luckily is in the source. Fire attack 5 or fire block 7 from flame wall. Fireball, ranged fire attack 5, just march straight over to that orc and demolish it with a ranged fire attack. Demolish, ignore sight fortifications and enemies get armor minus 1. Well, I don't think we've got any fortified enemies right now. Or of course we, we can just uh, move on because that, that stays in our hand until we use it or until the round ends. But that is going to be my turn, isn't it? We can switch back to very zoomed in Goldix, and he is going to draw three cards. One, two, three. That's white. He does not have a white mana crystal. So you don't have to deal with that. They're just gone from the game. And all too quickly, it's back to my decision and what I am going to have to do. So we do, we do have some movement now, so I could, if I wanted to, just uh, have a look around, see, what's, uh, see what the next tile would give me. I can heal or draw a card. Desperately wanted something else. Remember, I haven't got any way of using any other kind of abilities right now. Because all I've got is red. So I could do the spell. What is it? Move three. I am kind of tempted to just, I would kind of be in, if I waltzed on over to the orc to fight him, I don't actually know what I'm going to fight, do I? Because it's, um, it's a summon attack at the start of the block phase, draw a random brown enemy, it replaces the enemy in the block and assign damage phases. Oh, so if I killed it with ranged, I could just go over there and get four fame which wouldn't quite level me up. Or I could go over and reveal a new tile. Now, we, I would be standing on a Magical Glade as well. Healing Essence, if you end your turn on a Magical Glade, you can throw away a Wound card from your hand or discard pile. This is not the same as healing. And if you start your turn on a Magical Glade during the day, you get a Gold Mana Token. So on, only a token, you have to use it that turn. Uh, and if it's at night, you get a black mana token. And that's basically, gold is wild mana. Very, very useful to have. Meeting time, have a good meeting. As, as good a meeting as, uh, <laughs> as it's possible to have. Going to be here for a while. Yes, I haven't even revealed a new tile yet. And uh, been in about an hour. Favorite game. I did wrong. It is a fantastic game. One of the best solo games around, I think. So I'm on a village. Maybe I should do something in the village. Trouble is, as good as my little influence token is, 
I haven't really got cards that would help me out with getting more influence. So I can uh, flip back to the, the walkthrough here. So it can tell us about villages again. So reputation and stuff, we, we, aren't, we haven't got good enough reputation to, to get discounts or anything yet. You can play cards to get influence, and you can play them sideways as influence one. With influence, you can buy one or more things. You can recruit a village unit and buy points of healing. The recruiting units tells you which units can be recruited there. You need units with a village icon. Now, in the walkthrough, it makes sure there's at least one available. And the cost for recruiting it is in its upper left corner. That's how many influence points you have to pay. So while I am here, I could recruit something I've, I've only got two i could play something sideways and recruit you know the the herbalists they could ready a different unit get you a green mana or if you spend a green mana they can heal you but uh, if you've got first move explored yeah I, th I think that would be a good move since i am already stood here and i haven't really got any influence right now and depending on what we have it could it could show us what we have to go over here. Uh, I am playing first recon. I am uh, walking through. So we do have a move too. It would be the turn. But I could just play. I could just explore. And I could keep going. I, I haven't really got cards that would help me keep going. I could play Tranquility to draw something else. Thanks for being here, Kyle. Hopefully I will have cracked it. <laughs> Soon enough. So yeah, let's, let's explore. So I can move off the edge of the map and see what is yonder it's two movement points there's no way i can get any other mana yet so let's reveal the next map tile and see what we find so again a village again a magical mine but now find ourselves revealing a new thing which if i flip to let's start now revealing the keep Find and read the keep description card. When you reveal it, place a grey enemy token face down on its space. And if you go adjacent during the day, uh, reveal the token. So, we don't know what this is. We don't know who's hiding in the keep until you go over there. But there is an enemy to be defeated over there. And you can do other things at the keep as well. Where is keep? These are all two-sided. So, usually it's on the very last card that you have a look at. So when revealed, yeah, place it there. If it's unconquered, you can assault the keep and get reputation minus one. The defending enemies are fortified. And if you do defeat the enemies that are there, you own the keep. You can assault other players' keeps. Uh, but if you're in your keep, you can recruit units that have got the keep icon here. And if you end your turn on or adjacent to a keep that you own, your hand limit is one higher for every keep you own. You can end up with a crazy hand limit by the end of it. So, let's see what is going on here. Oh, that's all okay. So I moved to reveal a new thing. I need to give myself, if I press reputation, there we go. I need to give myself plus one fame because it's the first recon mission. The walkthrough gives you that little bonus, help you level up a little bit easier. But now, there's another village right next to me. Maybe, now I, I haven't really got another, a great way of moving right now, or doing anything. I can block, I can attack, I could do Tranquility to just draw another card. I want to try and make the best of this turn. Maybe, maybe the best thing to do is going to end up being walking over to this, uh, this orc and defeating it, which would level me up again, let me control some more units. Or I can just end there and hope that I draw some kind of influence or something. But I might have gone through all of my uh, influence cards. I've played a lot of my cards already so far. Recruit some peasants that would help me attack and block and stuff. I would get to draw two more cards now, though, because of my planning. Maybe, hopefully I'm not being too cautious here, but I think I'm going to end my turn there. So stamina is discarded. Draw two more cards. Here we go. Here's some influence. So stamina, help me move again. Maybe I'm going to move. Oh, you can, you can just do nothing, though, as your action. 
Yeah, because I didn't have any um, influence cards or more movement cards. I think I'll just end there. Yeah, that's me. So I can... Oh, they're threatened. So I can influence five, but it would give me reputation minus one. So I could you know, recruit uh, some good units. Let's take a look over, though, at Goldix. What's he going to do? He's, uh, he's determined. He's threatening. And he has got stamina, which is blue, which unfortunately for me is one more card. He's got one card in his deck. So that's okay, though, because he's going to draw... He's only going to draw that one card next time, right? Then his next turn, he declares end of round. So that means I've got three turns, right? I've got the one now. Then he draws that card. And I get another turn. And, he... and then the next time, he's got nothing in his deck. So he declares end of round. And I get one more turn after that. So I've got three turns. Which I think should be okay. I've only got two more cards. Uh, leveling up is always a good strategy. Maybe that's what we should do. So I do have Threaten, though. So I could use that red mana that is just waiting in the source to be used. And I could recruit. Let's take a look back over at the unit offer. So the Utem Swordsman can only be recruited at... That's a keep, right? Yes, that's a keep. The herbalists and the peasants can be recruited at a village. So three or four influence. Well, actually, I wouldn't even need to spend the red mana. I could do influence two and then my two free influence to recruit the peasants to give me either attack or block two, influence two, move two. I feel like they would be a good call. And I could if I wanted to. I don't think plundering would be a worthwhile idea. I think maybe that's something to do. And then next turn, I could go on over to that orc and take that orc out. I reckon. Sound good? Quick drink. Peasants is always a good first unit. That is good to hear. I feel more confident in my, <laughs> my threatening purchase. Oh yeah, that's where the camera's pointing. Uh, so I think, yeah, I've, I've got the influence baked in, thanks to my skill. And it's good at readying more units. There are villages about, though. I, I'm going to go attacky. I'm going to recruit those peasants. So it costs me four influence, which I pay with my threaten and my built-in skill of two influence in the day, three at night. We're in the day still. So my peasants come on over to my playing area. This here is your command token and shows you how many units you're allowed and also when you've used them, their command token goes on there and, and they, they can't be used again that day, right? They get refreshed at night or you've got the herbalists. You can ready a level one or two unit as their ability. They can ready someone else. So that is my turn, really. I can't, uh, I can't do anything else. I couldn't have recruited any more. When do I refresh the display of them? Is that only at the end of the day or something? I'm not sure if I refresh the offer right now. It's about plundering, recruiting units with the village icon. Are I replying to that now? Tell me a walkthrough. Let's have a look. Let's start now. Units, units, units. You're further back up here. Units. Activating a unit. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Spent and ready units. There are advanced units. When do we put him back? Go back to the setup bit in case it tells me there. Nope, just tells me at the start of it. I bet it tells me like at the end of a day. Do these things. I don't think I do it right now, do I? Close refresh when changing day or night. Okay. In the morning. There we go then. So we don't do anything with that. I do still get to draw a card because of my planning. So I've got swiftness again. Just uh, crazy ranged attack. Although I don't even need it, do I? I've got, I've got um, the fireball spell that I could potentially do. What if I had enough movement to run on over to that um, 
that keep and take them out. So if they're fortified, so I should uh, switch to you, shouldn't I? If they are fortified, that zoomed in enough, only siege attacks can be used against this enemy in the ranged and siege attacks phase. So I couldn't just use ranged attacks. Although I could use, go to the spells as well, I could use demolish to ignore site fortifications and they get my armor minus one. And depending on their block, I do have ranged attack. That's going to be my turn though, isn't it? I've drawn cards. Dummy player's turn, we know. Draws the card. That's all of his cards. But he doesn't declare end of round yet. He only declares end of round when he starts his turn with no cards. So we're okay. I do ha still have one card waiting to be drawn. So let's see. Those, those are my options then as I see it. I could either take the easy way, head on over to this orc. I would be standing on a magical glade for the following day. All of that good stuff. Take it out immediately with a ranged fire attack 5. Because my magical talent lets me use these spells. Even though I haven't got them. So I could just do that. I would level up for doing it. I would be over here, which isn't too far away from revealing a new tile. You know, in the wedge that it makes. A new tile can go there. Or... I would need five movements to get over to the keep just to see what it is. But if it works out, I have demolish to ignore their fortifications and give them enemy minus one. And yeah, if I took the keep, as Michael says, it would give me a temporary hand size increase while I'm on it or next to it. And I could recruit like the Utem swordsman at the keep. For example, because if I do manage to destroy the keep, I would level up and get another command token. So I could have two units. And I do have the peasants that could potentially help me fight. Maybe not in normal stuff. But the, the orc is a given. I would take it out. It's easy. It's easy. All of that. But keep is riskier, I feel. How, how would I get there? I'd need movement 5, so I would have to play. Yeah, I'd have to play swiftness as movement. Go back to my player area. I would have to play swiftness as movement. That'd be move 4, move 5, say. I could just move there this turn and then attack next turn when I've got whatever card this is. And being next to it, I would see what it is. Keep is a better option. I think it's it seems enticing. Yeah, determination, tranquility. Uh, she doesn't need the heal card because she can already move uh, wounds out of her hand. Oh, so ignore the herbalists, like the and maybe the tranquility card because I don't really need to uh, destroy that. Yeah, being being in a forest isn't too bad, is it? Because I, as long as you don't have to move through the forests at night because yeah the the movement cost goes up to go into the spaces at night have I got any more move in my deck I don't know I've got one card I let's look through your discard and stuff right I don't feel like I've moved as much aren't there two marches that might just be me making things up saying that it would be good to just move a bit this turn and then move the rest of it next turn and then fight rather than having to spend like all of these cards if I haven't got enough movement you won't be able to charge the key. Oh yeah you have to go uh, onto the space don't you to it's not like rampaging where you just do it from adjacent. I've got to go into the keep haven't I to fight it go to the, the keep phase you must assault the site, your movement immediately. I'll put it on, I'm just reading it myself. Uh, you cannot pass through unconquered fortified sites without interrupting your movements. It's not something that's received pos positively, so you get reputation minus one. Fight combat 
will own the thing. So yeah, if I haven't got a move, I'm not even going to be able to get there. Better reveal the keep before the night. Do you think just move a bit there? I, I, could, I could say... It's a shame that we never got any... Oh, I've got the peasants as well that I could use as move if I needed to. How much uh, move is it to go onto the keep three? So it wouldn't be ideal, but I could get there. It, it depends how hardy they are, really, doesn't it? So I think I've got a couple of turns. I could just move two now, have that be my turn, draw my final card, and then move the rest of the way and fight it next turn. Then potentially I would have another movement card. It's not going to be an amazing movement card though, is it? To get me actually onto it. Thinking of saving the swiftness. This, this would get me next to it though, wouldn't it? And we can decide what to do next turn. Move two, move four, move five. That would take me two, three, next to it, reveal it. Then we can decide what to do. If you reveal, you'll have time to prepare. Yes, so spinning that extra card sideways. Five movements. I'm next to the keep. Let's see what it is. It is... Oh dear. There are names for them somewhere, aren't there? Is that on the back of the, the walkthrough? Yes, it tells you uh, what they're all called. That is a swordsman. There are two of them. So they're fortified. We can't just do ranged. Unless we do that spell to get rid of it. We would need to generate five... But that's their armor, isn't it? So if I did demolish to get rid of their fortifications and, my, and enemy minus one, could I get ranged? I've got no ranged. I've just used the card, haven't I? I'm just staying here for now anyway. Uh, what uh, are the cards? The cards are just standard Ultra Pro card things, I think. I don't know if they're standard. Maybe they're Euro or something like that. Go on the Board Game Geek uh, card list for the, the card type, but they are just standard Ultra Pro uh, card sleeves at the pro mat or anything like that. I couldn't find them. And now, when I was looking for another game that I was sleeving, I can't find these anymore. Uh, they seem to be out of stock at the moment in the UK. So, yeah. <laughs> if, if I do get to the point of um, of getting to the Lost Legion or something, for example, I might have to <laughs> re-sleeve the entire thing. So that's the end of my turn. We go over to Goldix. He hasn't got uh, he hasn't got a deck anymore so he declares end of round so we get one more turn now right yes that that all works out we've got that plan use penny sleeves i i'm going to need to hand right here but i have got some sleeve kings that um that are kind of a a, a halfway house between the two so these ultra pro are beautiful Premium, very thick, very nice, but expensive, right? It's it's like two pounds fifty, three pounds for fifty of those. But the the sleeve kings are two pounds twenty five. Anyway, of course, uh, for like a hundred and ten of them, and they're not this premium thing. They're they're thicker than penny sleeves that I I had some. I think they were ultra pro penny sleeves when I bought a second hand. Uh, Marvel Legendary, and they were quite baggy and quite um, ill-fitting on those, but these these Sleeve Kings ones, not sponsored. I bought them all. Uh, but yeah, they, they seem quite nice. They're not, they don't have the beautiful premiumness of this, but they've been uh, quite good for a game where perhaps you have a load of cards. And then afterwards I saw that they do a Midara set. I'm planning on playing Midara again, so hopefully that'll all work out. Uh, use Ultra Pro Mat. Yes, I've got those for Dragonfire, I think. They are really good, especially if you are filming uh, the games as well. It'll help for not have too much glare. I had to mess around with the lights and stuff, so uh, you couldn't. So you can see the cards a little bit in this. Dragon Sleeves Clear Mat. Looking at Dragon Sleeves, where I tried out the Sleeve Kings ones, but I was uh, asleep. Crazy game where there's loads and loads of them. Yeah, you can just throw them out if you get the Penny Sleeves. 
They are crazy. They are cheap as cheaps. If there is one of your Grail games, well, hopefully, I don't know if it's being affected by all this business with that canal getting blocked up, but uh, yeah, hopefully it, it's coming soon. The, the boats are out, aren't they, for uh, most of the world, I think. It's going to be coming at some point soon because I, I want uh, their, their online stores to launch so I can buy the, the upgrade pack and see if they've got any etched dice available or something. I've got the basic thing that I got sent about probably about two years ago now we would have it around now it would have been the period where rach and i were playing madara pretty much every night like try and do a mission a night try and keep up with all of this like we did when Glam gloomhaven came out and uh yeah it all ends eventually you run out of time at some point but after doing that top 10 really geared up to want to play it again uh, jump back at the, ho hopefully there's I, I think that there's going to be copies available in their web store when that launches when the games start arriving in the places fingers crossed because yeah it's uh, it's amazing back to mage night though i didn't draw cards did i so march perfect so i haven't got ranged have i i've well i've got ranged fire attack five from this spell but i can't do both spells let's see how to do this i haven't got siege attacks i didn't take that thing so i if i'm going to attack them i'm going to either need to take some wounds because they do six attack and i'm not going to be able to generate six block and then i need to do five damage to them they've got no other special symbols on here or anything and all I can do to boost with mana is get attack 4, which would be great for defeating them. But... Okay, there's not going to be enough cards to do what I uh, thought then, because I, I can, you know, play a spell card, and then I could do fire block 7. That would sort out all of the blocking, but I need to discard a card to be able to do that. And then I need to move in there, and I wouldn't have the five to actually kill them. So I think I'm going to have to maybe take some damage. So, so we have attack or block two from the peasants as well. Influence isn't going to help. Maybe we've got to take some wounds. Fight this thing, because we're going to have to... We're going to have to go in and play something sideways just to get there. We've got to move three into the keep, right? Then I can play the mana and do attack four, attack five. But I wouldn't be able to block that attack. So if I just flipped the walkthrough again, telling us about um, combat. So we've seen the ranged and siege attack phase. That's all we've seen so far. Kill them before they can even attack you. I can't do that this time because I haven't got any siege attack. They are fortified. Range doesn't work. I do have that spell that will get rid of their fortification. But I haven't got ranged then. So it doesn't matter. It's not worth doing. Uh, then block phase. Enemies you have not defeated now attack. Play blocks. And ice and fire work the same way for now until we get into ice and fire attacks. Uh, so we can play any blocks, play any non-wound card sideways as block one. Total value has to be equal to or higher than the attack value of the enemy. And if you don't fully block the attack, it goes through at full strength as if it were not blocked at all. Can't block the entire thing, don't bother. Then assign damage, which maybe we'll uh, have to get to because I don't know there's a way around that right i think just from the fact yeah that's the attack for i can get block two from my people so that's not enough is it i need block six and if i generate block six i don't have the attack which makes the whole thing pointless yeah no partial block is harsh but what makes the puzzle isn't it it's tempting to just do a uh, fireball just so I'm using a spell instead of my normal attack. It would be the same thing. I think 
I don't think there's any thinking around it, just partly because we've been so limited by the mana in the source that's been available. It's only been red the entire time here. You always have the two heal in your deck. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I've got my uh, my tranquility. I can maybe recruit herbalists and stuff later. I think we've got to attack, haven't we? So we're using Determination and March as move three, two from the March itself, place anything sideways to get one more move. That's going to move us onto the keep, and we start fighting with the swordsman there. And so we go ranged and siege, nothing going on there. Then we move to block. I'm not going to bother because I can't generate six block. I'll bring it back up now to remind myself as well. I'm try, trying to slyly do this as if I'm explaining the whole thing to you, but this is about me learning Mage Knight as well, me yeah, making sure that I've got, uh, got it all right. Maybe we can do this uh, more regularly. So assign damage. If you manage to block all the enemy attacks, skip. If you didn't, an unblocked attack does damage equal to its attack value. So that's six. It's up to you how to assign this damage. So we could, maybe it would be a good idea to just assign something to the unit. But you must assign the entire damage total for unblocked enemies. First, you may choose one of your units and announce you assign damage to it. Doesn't matter if it's ready, but it can't already be wounded. If you do, the unit gets wounded. Take a wound card from the wound pile and put it over the unit. It can't be used again until it's healed. And then the damage total is reduced by their armor value, which for the peasant, often go back to me, peasants have armor of three. So that would negate three of the six damage. I would, st I would still end up taking two wounds though. Turn it uh, back on. Damage remains, you can keep assigning it to other units, unless you don't want to. And then, it's got to be assigned to you. And the way this works is, you take a wound card to your hand, and reduce the damage by the armor value of your hero. If this reduces the damage to zero or less, that's it. If not, keep going until you've done all of the damage. So, if I don't assign any of this to units, I'm basically taking three wounds, right? It's six damage. You take a wound, reduce the damage by two. It's still four. Take another wound. Damage is still two. Take another wound. Damage is now zero. So I can stop. But that would be that. It's just that if I wound my peasants, I. I still take two wounds. They just take one instead. And I can heal them. So, about to tell me in the, in the thing it's going to tell me about attacking and stuff instead. But you can heal. Wound cards in your hand are completely useless, can't be discarded. Clog up your hand. If you can discard them, they still stay in your deck. Draw them eventually. There are other ways for them to get into your deck, such as poison. If you have any wounds in your hand at the end of the round, they get shuffled back into your deck, and there's a good reason to get rid of them. Wounded units can't be used until they've been healed, but some cards and units give you healing points. Play them at any point except during combat. Play them as any other cards. Uh, you can't play cards sideways for more healing. You can combine them with healing you buy in a village, and we are... well, we're kind of far away from villages now. Uh, as a result, you end up with healing points. So if you play a card that gives heal one, Activate a unit that gives heal two. You get six healing points. For a healing point, you can get rid of a wound card from your hand. And healing points equal to the level of the unit to remove one from the So it's it's the same, right? I would I would kind of negate using my I, I didn't use these peasants, unfortunately. Although they, they stick around, don't they? So I could basically just give them one of these three wounds. I can't use them for a while, but when I get the opportunity to heal. Rather than the wound cards being hidden in my deck, is what I'm thinking, I would have a wound always ready to heal there if I go to a village or something. That's, that's my thought process behind this, what do you reckon? So then we go to the attack phase, and I need to deal five attack to these fellas, which I can do. Rage, boosted by mana from the source, is attack four. Sideways for attack five. Boom. Done. So, that's all of my cards played. These wounds aren't going to matter because it's the end of the round. The end of the day. 
So for this, I gain four fame. One, two, three, four. So I get myself. <laughs> unfortunately, this didn't happen earlier. But I get myself a new command token. And in doing so, my armor now is three. So I would only have taken two wounds rather than three. And so peasants reducing it by three meant I would only take, uh, take one. Oh, I'm wounding them, aren't I? Where are those wound cards? Wound you, peasants. Sorry. So I have a new command token now, so I can recruit people. And I've kind of got my eye on these, uh, these Utem swordsmen, right? Because I'm at a keep. They can only be recruited in a keep. Um, right, all of that's done. I've gained my four fame. I need to lose a reputation. They don't like you attacking the keeps. And then I need to get rid of that keep token, pop it in the discard and put a shield over this keep to show that that is my keep now. And from right away, I'm going to be on a keep, right? The next round, where's that keep card? If you end your turn on or adjacent to a keep, your hand limit is one higher for each keep that you own. You exhaust a unit during a round and assign damage to it later. When you heal the damage, Unit become unexhausted or stay exhausted. All units are unexhausted. Between yeah. Well, the chat bar is very narrow on the side, isn't it? Maybe I need to turn the font size down on that. Not right now, but for future streams. Hello, all people watching as well. I hope that this has given you some idea of how to how Mage Knight goes, or a laugh at how uh, <laughs> badly I might do. Uh, so we need to now. Let's um, scroll past all of the revealing new tiles and all of that business because uh, command level ups. Yep, I've done all of that. End of round. If a player runs out of cards in the deck, they do not want to play. Back up. <laughs> they do not want to play anything else. There, and that's end of round. We need to prepare for a new round. When do I do the dummy player business? I think I do that first, right? Dummy player has some business. Yes, it's when we remove cards, we uh, affect him. So, let me run through these things. Flip the day and night board to the other side. This is showing the new cost of movement. Basically, desert and forest flip. <laughs> Hello. Uh, more explored tiles. We've got one more <laughs> explored map tile, and we defeated a keep. We took some, uh, took some wounds, but have uh, destroyed a keep. So flip that board. Oh, I need to I need to keep this up on my screen, don't I? Flip that board, the time of day changes. It's going to be the night time now. I can get rid of my planning card because solo game, they are removed permanently. But I am going to... Maybe his deck. Reroll all the mana dice to form the new source. It's going to be a night round. So this time, gold dice are going to be depleted from the source. So watch this be like three gold dice or something. One. So straight away, that is one of the three dice gone the entire night. Uh, yes, and so that's bad at night. At least half of the dice need to be basic colours. Okay. Is that just at the start of the round, or should I have done that when I had uh, two night ones? Take all the unit cards that weren't recruited and put them at the bottom of the deck. Oh, no, we're not getting the Utim Swordsman. Where is that deck? It's a big lean. So that goes at the bottom of the deck. Uh, there aren't any advanced actions. We haven't found a monastery yet. Reveal new cards for the unit offer equal to the number of players plus two. If there are any monasteries, reveal that many advanced action cards. There aren't. For the advanced action offer, remove the card that is in the lowest position of the offer and put it at the bottom of the deck, but no. Because, that's a bit too low down, in the solo game, when removing the lowest one, we add it to the dummy player's deck instead, and then shuffle the dummy player's deck. So, oh, what, what card was that? That was a white card, which isn't a bad thing right now, because he's not getting a white 
crystal. So that is essentially another card. Hopefully make it a little bit longer. Depends what order they come out though, doesn't it? I really love mashing uh, sleeve cards together. It's really satisfying. I want to do Millennium Blades. Imagine mash shuffling that ridiculous stack of cards. You're shuffled. And then we need... Yep, shift the other cards down and reveal a new one. Camera for this, what have we found? Mana Storm. Choose a mana die in the source that is showing a basic color and gain a crystal of that. It's basically like beefed up version of that. Um, the card that we've got in our decks. You know what I mean. The card, right. Uh, the spell offer is refreshed in the same way. And that means that when we do that, put it at the bottom of the deck as usual. But put a crystal of that color on the dummy player's inventory. So the spell card that we're getting rid of is red. So he's going to get himself a red crystal onto his inventory now. And this goes to the bottom of the deck. We'll get to see a new spell that maybe the amazing spell thing is going to think, going to work with. So this takes black mana, expose, target enemy loses all fortifications and resistances for this combat and ranged attack too. Brilliant. Uh, so, oh, that's white. White, and then white and black do its fantastic night mode. Maybe. Uh, we'll get to do. Then shuffle all of your deed cards, form a new deed deck. Do you have any banner artifacts? I don't have anything that fancy just yet. Then draw cards up to your hand limit. So my hand limit is now six, right? Because I am stood on this keep, right? Me um, get get bad dice in the middle of the round. You're just a bit stuck. Oh, so it's only at the start of the round that we have at least two good ones on. Yeah, I got, I got a little bit stuck in that previous round. Okay. So my I'm I'm on a keep. So my Draw limit is six, right? Right, that kicks in straight away, I think. Spell that spell. Expose. I'm going to say that is shuffled. And let's see what we're dealing with. Do have two wounds in here. We're going to need to make some space if I recruit some more units, aren't I? Okay, we are looking quite... We've got a bit of everything, haven't we? Got a bit of movement, a bit of attacking, a bit of using spells. Probably going to reveal a new car straight away, I reckon. Uh, any more steps? Go for your deed cards. Yep, yep, yep. Units that were spent become ready. And use my unit apart from as a kind of shield. Any skills that were flipped face down go back up again. And all players return their tactic cards. We need to choose our tactics for the night. And so the player who was playing later the previous round gets priority for picking. Is that the same for uh, solo? Does solo change? Do I always pick? It says in the scenario, in the solo conquest scenario, you always choose first. Solo scenario. Ah, yes, I am in a keep, aren't I? And... Uh, so I need to choose tactics in a minute. Hand can get out of the way for a sec. But if we have a quick peek at the source over here. Hmm. <laughs> Can't recruit any of these. Uh, keep. Unfortunately. <laughs> influence would be good. But sadly. We've uh, had some bad luck with the unit offer there. So let's uh, flip back to me. And have a look at these... Nightfall abilities. So, just the same. We can go for From the Dusk. Definitely want to be first. You can do that and get no ability. Long Night. One time this night, if your deck is empty, you may shuffle your discard pile and put three cards at random back into it. And then flip this card face down. Mana Search. Once per turn before you use mana from the source. Dice. You may re-roll up to two of them. And when you choose them, you must pick Depleted first. Do have a depleted. 
could be even better to do if we end up with more depleted. Midnight Meditation. One time this night before any of your turns, you may shuffle up to five cards included wo including wounds from your hand back into your deck and draw that many and then flip this face down. Preparation. When you take this tactic, search your deck for any one card and put it in your hand and then shuffle your deck. But if we get to a fight and I want that... Oh, I've got my magic talent straight away anyway, haven't I? That'd be the one that springs to mind that I'd want to search through. And then Sparing Power. Once before the start of each of your turns, choose one, put the top card of your deed deck face down under this card, or flip this card face down and put all cards under it into your hand. I kind of like the idea of that, and put things like Threaten and Magic Talent and stuff under this card until I get the best use for them. What do you reckon? I don't feel like these ones. Although Long Night, shuffle some things back into your thing. This is awesome for an endgame fire. That might end up being what we do at the very end of this. So maybe, maybe save that. You can only use it once in the whole game. Maybe save that until night two. Although Goldix might take it. Got a 20% chance of taking it, hasn't he? Mana Search might help us with the dice if we get unlucky with them again. Midnight Meditation might help us if we draw, if we, if we just want to shuffle some cards back in. A well, Long Night could be good if we rattle through our deck. We get to get three random cards back, but they could still be wounds if we, hadn't, if we haven't healed them. For any of your cards, you may shuffle five cards back into your deck and draw that many cards. I think I'm, I'm feeling like Mana Search. I'm feeling like the dice hate me this game. As they always do, right? And that they need to be taught a lesson. I'm not going to do it straight away. I want to find an enemy, basically. I've got a hand of cards. Apart from the influence card, I've got a hand of cards that are just begging uh, for an enemy over here. Oh, we need uh, we need Goldix to pick his um, tactics, don't we? And it's going to be from the dusk. So he's going first again, but he get, well, he gets no ability anyway. He's not taking an ability away from how uh, How is T after nearly two hours? Not that great. Although, cold T gets to a point where it stops being anything other than cold T, doesn't it? It doesn't get worse at a certain point. So, we need uh, Goldix, what are you doing? So desperate to go first. Draw your three cards. Do your worst. White, that's fine by me. That's not getting in my way whatsoever. So, we're on a keep. That increases our hand size, but does very little else for us right now. Because we can't recruit anything, because over in the unit offer, there's an out. We can be recruited here. Peasants only at a village. Uh, these are only at monasteries, right? Oh yeah, search for a monastery, we should. So I think the thing to do, I don't think it's too dangerous to just only play one card right now. Because we could play more, couldn't we, to move more if we needed to. I think, what about, you need to see my player area, don't you? What if we do stamina with the blue from the source to move four, two of it to reveal a new tile, Can we reveal two new tiles from where I'm standing? Quite sure. This position. We can reveal at least one. So I th but either way, if I generate move four with this, I can move after I've found a new thing. So I'm definitely going to use two of it to reveal a new tile. And like all the numbers have to face the same way. Yeah, because isn't one tile like there? And then I could use the other two to reveal another tile here. Right, so I found myself a another village, another rampaging orc, which we need to see. Now we're not going to get to zoom in quite as far on the on the old map, but I can like move in the zoomed view. If we need to. If we're not going to go back to earlier on in the map, I can like. 
element is too small to be displayed. Hogwash. Nonsense. Kind of like move that along a little bit like that. So. We found a mage tower as well. Scroll back to revealing the tile with that on it. Revealing a mage tower. Find and re read the mage tower description card. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not showing you the rulebook either, But I can just show you this. I can just show you. It's as easy as search through all these cards. Mage Tower. When revealed, place a violet enemy token face down on this space. It's revealed during the day if you're adjacent to it. So at night, we're going to have to charge in if we want to fight this thing. So that goes over there. There's nothing to recruit from there at the moment, is there? So while unconquered, you can assault this from reputation minus one. They are fortified. And if you assault it, mark it with a shield token, gain a spell on the deck. While conquered, anyone can recruit units and buy spells here. Spells can be bought for seven influence plus a mana of that type. And that's Mage Towers. But I'm going to use my other two movements to reveal here, right? There. Yeah. But the, the mage tower. Uh, oh, I, I do need, for revealing a new tile, I get a fame. And then I think my other two movements, I could start making my way over here. I could recruit some more peasants and maybe fight that orc. But I feel like, and because I've kind of seen the next page of the walkthrough is monasteries, I'm going to reveal the next tile, uh, which slots in quite nicely there. And is that going to be in the zoomed in one? Just about, yeah. So what have we found here? Uh, move to village and plunder next turn, draw two cards. I probably should have done that. But I can, I am in the keep now here, so I will get to draw my six still. And I could, it would be too many cards, I think, to move into that lovely glade. But a monastery is here now. A monastery is up there where I can recruit. But these monks get ice blocks and things. Uh, I have to. Oh, but to get to it though, from here, I've got to move through forests, which is the worst thing at night. Five movement to go through these. There's a rampaging orc over here. The lovely crystal mine, but do good. Oh. So I've done my stamina. I have nothing else that innately gives me stuff. Oh yeah, the, the village would have been next to the keep still, so I still would have had the plus one, shouldn't, wouldn't I? I should have done that. I can't use my unit because they're wounded. And I could go and heal them at the village. I should definitely have gone to the village. I regret that immensely. <laughs> Temple. Temple? The, monast the monastery is good. I just getting to it is going to take me twelve movement through <laughs> all of those forests. So for now, I can keep moving, right? But it would cost me two more. It would cost me two cards just to move over to that village. Maybe I should just have that as my turn. Hi, Aaron. Yeah, it's maybe not, uh, not as good to join in in the middle of it, but I did go right from the start. You can watch this back and see me uh, slowly progress into it. Basically, we are a mage knight. We're going across this map, fighting bad guys, well, actually fighting good guys as well, depending on what kind of mage knight you want to be. And uh, because this is a complicated game, it's hard to do everything. It's hard to even move. Sometimes it's a it's a puzzle just moving a couple of spaces, but uh, I I've plunked myself in this keep here. I have defeated the defenders of this keep, which gives me a bit of a benefit. Uh, I was looking for a monastery because that's where all of the units are hiding out. But unfortunately, the monastery is behind a load of forests, and at night it's hard to go through forests. So I'm probably not going to be able to go there. I think I'm just going to end my turn there. Hope that I draw some movements. Go to the village next turn and hope that Goldix isn't going to rush me.
too much. So I discard the stamina. I need to re-roll the mana. Green there. And I need to draw a card. Improvisation. It's got move on it. I have to discard another card to do it. And I could just march my way into the mage tower. I, I've got... I haven't got white mana. Use like... I don't think you can see spells in these shots now, can you? Expose would be brilliant for fighting whatever's in that mage tower. Loses all fortifications and resistances. And ranged attack two. And then I've got ranged attack three already from here. I haven't got any more ranged attacks from that. But I need um, made white. Oh, does the, does the monastery... I don't think I looked at the monastery when I reveal it, does it? Does it should I have added extra cards right away? Monastery. You can recruit things. When a monastery is revealed, put the top card of the advanced actions deck face up in the unit's offer. Advanced actions in the unit's offer can be bought at a monastery for six influence. So we need to see... Uh, a card that can be recruited here. You can get some training. Throw away an action card from your hand and then take a card of the same colour from the advanced actions offer and put it in your discard pile. And then the the beefed up mannered version is uh, put it straight into your hand. Uh, like this format, it's, it's like, I, I really like it. Like, I know that I've been seeing people do live playthroughs for a long time, but I really like this swish Oh, it's going to all of these different angles. And if I can remember where the button is and do it mid-sentence. Oh, seamless. But this is only the second time. Get more used to it, right? There's still normal playthroughs getting filmed as well. But I like that. I like the immediacy of this as well. This is just up. This is... Uh, I don't know why I can, I can see chat in the tiny uh, box here. It is the Paul Grogan format. Paul has, uh, Paul has given me innumerable tips over the years in this. And uh, chief amongst them lately, yesterday, uh, oh, as he was here for the first stream as well. But yeah, walk me through some of these uh, tips and tricks up in the contrast and stuff to try and get it so that you can see all of this uh, this stuff. Because I was, I was doing basically the same thing that Paul does. Of, uh, if you're interested in the ins and outs of things, uh, there's, there's a 4K camera. It's my, you know, the, the one that's usually in my hand. 4K camera looking down at this. And because we're only outputting in 1080, can zoom in quite far on this. You can't always see the text that clearly. I'd hope I'd hope that was quite clear for you. Like I'm not looking at it. Um, I'm looking at a small preview screen on this. I hope, I hope you'd be able to see that zoomed in, but maybe smaller text like um, like say that might not be that clear when it's uh, stretched out. But it's pretty good, isn't it? Just from all of this. And yeah, the I'm not sure about the. The chat box looks a bit narrow and stuff, but hey, this is all experimentation and stuff. This is only the second stream. Let's... I'm ending my turn, aren't I? Just standing, revealing new tiles and doing nothing else. And then we are going to Goldix, who is revealing three new cards. White again. We, uh, we live another day. Uh, so the Goldix is a dummy player. For anyone that wasn't here earlier, uh, he's basically a timer. He has a deck like everyone else, but he, he doesn't do anything. He's not on the map. He's nothing at all. On his turn, you draw three cards from his deck. If the last card he drew matches any of these colors, you draw that many more. So if the last one had been green, we would draw two more cards. And when his deck runs out, he can declare the end of round. So if so, at the moment, we can see he's he's going pretty casually. He hasn't drawn any extra cards in his two turns. So you can get a feel for we can take our time a little bit here, but sometimes if he keeps drawing greens, for example, you know, I've got to get moving before all of this runs out. So, it's back to me, and I... What did I draw? I don't know what I drew. The card's pretty clear. Good. I'm glad. I need... To have a drink. I've brought more varied drinks with uh, tea isn't good for that long is it if you keep forgetting to drink it going for water big fan of water myself i know they should drinks but very nice to me anyway mage knighting 
What should we do? I could just move. Improvisation would get me onto the village, but I would have to discard another card to go there. And <laughs> I feel like this is incredibly reckless, but I am so tempted to just march into that mage tower and <laughs> just fight them. But I couldn't do that because I would need move five to get over there. To get move five, I could activate the bottom of this card because you can do the tops of cards for free. To do the bottom of cards, you have to have mana tokens or crystals, which I haven't got any of. Or once per turn, you can use a die from the source. At night, if you roll gold, that die's useless for the rest of the night. So I have red or green available, but you can only use one per turn unless you've got uh, something that says otherwise. So if I did move to that mage tower, that would be the only manner I would be able to use. And I don't feel like with the rest of the stuff I have, I have enough to go and take on that mage tower. Other things that I can do, I can just walk over to the village. I could do crystallize. When you play this, also play it, pay a mana of a basic color and gain a crystal of that color, which in a future turn would let me do multiple things. I, th I think we we gotta we've gotta go over to the village, right? We've gotta head over to the village. Maybe recruit something. We won't reveal the mage tower because it's night time. We could head on over to the the orc. And we can see what that is. We would only get two fame for killing him. Get a reputation. I think... Let's see. To move... I haven't really got movement cards. Unless we use Improvisation, which does discard another card. Which isn't ideal. It's a shame we can't get to that monastery because I... Um, I've got a skill that helps me with influence. I get three influence for free whenever I need it. I do have a unit that needs healing. That is a good point. Use my influence on that, couldn't I? We need to get into that. Um, we, we need to go to the monastery, don't we? The, the village. So what should I... I don't feel like I should discard magic talent at all. Battle versatility, I think I should hold on to as well. If I'm going to the village, influence is going to be vital. So I don't want to discard that. Determination's nice for some attack or block. I feel like, though, what if I discard that to be able to play Improvisation so I can move to the village? And then I also play Crystallize to maybe grab myself a red mana crystal so that maybe if I'm heading over to fight this um, Mage Tower, I would be able to do a couple of cards in one go reckon to that. It's using a lot of cards, but I am... Um, as I hear any dissenting voices, I feel like that is a good way to go, because I haven't used any mana so far. I think that's going to be my plan, because I am still... If I'd listened to Michael in the first place, before I revealed that other tile, I should have just gone straight over to the village, because you're still next to the keep, you're still benefiting from that, and if you plunder the village, you suffer a little bit reputation-wise, and then you get to draw even more cards. I don't know. A healed unit can help to capture a magic tower. Definitely. Always fight the orc. Let's see how... Um, how is this camera looking? It's pointing up. You want to see the magic? There is the fuzzy out of focus magic from a webcam I'm disappointed in. Uh, I, had, I had a lovely Marty shot set up for, so we could cut to Marty whenever. But uh, he didn't want to come in here. And then when he did come in here, he whacked the camera with his tail. <laughs> and uh, you, can't, uh, you can't really look at your shot until you've uh, switched to it, which is a shame. So I think I'm going to do that. I haven't heard any advice against it, so I'm going to go for a red crystal, thanks to Crystallize. 
And I've played this to move over into the village and discarded a card along with it. We need to re-roll a die in the source. <laughs> oh, it would have been so smooth. White! <gasps> White is what we need to go and fight that mage tower because we can use Expose over here. We're allowed to use spells. Loses all fortifications and you get ranged attack too. <gasps> I think uh, a plan is forming. Where are we going now? So that's my turn, isn't it? I have played Crystallize as well, so that goes. I am next to a keep, so I uh, keep my hand limit of six. I've drawn a wound, fortunately. That's not too bad so far, is it? And I'm in a village where I can heal the wounds. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't need to end my turn, did I? I've used... I have used a... I have used that Crystallize. Maybe I shouldn't have done Crystallize. Oh, I'm kind of seeing my mistake now. I could have just gone in there and done Influence 5. But it's, it's okay. Let's not do any takebacks because now I'm going to be going into a village with a wound. Got a Fuzzy Orc. Where? What's going on? We need to go to Golix. Let's draw his three cards to... Three. It's white again. Every turn it's been white so far. And so he doesn't draw any extra things. Yes, if you reveal new information, you can't take it. So. Yeah. We don't do anything else from him. And so now. Let's, uh, let's go back to the village. Where's the village? We go back to the village. Oh, Marty. <laughs> yeah, why, why won't that camera... Maybe, maybe it's just... Autofocus doesn't work on cats, maybe. Because, uh, yeah, it's not... <laughs> it's so blurry. There he is. He is. He's pointing the wrong way from the camera as well. I won't spin him over. He won't like that. But what... Uh, what should we... That's... I'm not needed. We're looking at villages, aren't we? So you can recruit units here. We have peasants that we can recruit again and be our second unit. Get some more use out of them. We only need four influence for that. We can buy a point of healing for three influence. So if I want to heal the influence that's in my hand and the influence that is on my unit, the wounds, not influence, I need six influence to heal those two wounds. I can get five influence by threatening and using the red crystal that I gained. You can, you can play anything as... Um, you can play anything sideways, though. To... Oh, 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 oh! Concentration. When you... I, I could use green source for this. When you play... When you play this, play another action card with it. And get the stronger effect for free. And if it gives you move influence, block, or any type of attack, get that amount plus two. That could be good for getting me... That gets me seven influence right now. Plus three is ten. I use six on healing, four on the peasants. I can always recruit other units later on. But... The, the flip side of that is, if I save the concentration to, say, use with battle versatility... Oh, uh, yeah. I'm showing the webcam rather than this camera. I could up... This could increase ranged attack by two or siege attack by two. Hmm. And on the other hand, if I don't... Uh, if I don't use the concentration, I could just use my crystal that I saved to get influence five, influence eight. I don't need eight, there. Oh, I could, I could, I could not spend anything and just do two five and play, say March, as um, sideways for one, and that's just six. And then I just do the healing, and then I've got concentration to boost my ranged attack next time.
yeah, what, what, what do we do? So many options always in this. I would get movement. I need three movement to go into the mage tower. I've got no idea what's in there, though. At night, no idea what you get in for. What do you reckon? Big healing and recruit some peasants? Or just do some healing and... Yeah, use up the concentration for a massive influence and do some recruiting? Or use up the march to just... to just heal and not recruit anyone as well as that? Absolutely no idea what's going on. <laughs> that is, that's it's a familiar feeling with Mage Knight. Feel that way for a long time in it. Head towards the monastery. How do you reckon? Through all of the forests and things, do you think? Not um not the Mage Tower idea. Can I Don't worry, we we won't stay on Marty forever. While I'm uh, getting some feedback. I'm trying to see if uh Properties, big video, oh, auto, terrible, there he is, <laughs> that's way better for the Marty camera, right, he's still really dark, but you can kind of make out some fur now, right, it will take a while to get there, but you should start to, to get to the monastery. But go there and get some groups. You think I should heal while I'm here, though? Yeah, I could do concentration later to heal, say, the... to do march to... and then march would be move six. I would check the spell offer before attacking a mage tower at night. But what I was thinking was... I've got white mana... in... the source. And I've got magic talent... that lets me... if I discard a card from my hand... I can... play... a spell... and it stays where it is. So I could play Expose over here... Which means whatever this is, it loses all fortifications and resistances, and I get ranged attack 2. And I've got battle versatility that would give me ranged attack 3 as well. I would be going in with ranged attack 5. Which if I play it with concentration, could be boosted to ranged attack 7 straight away. That's what I'm kind of thinking, that I could just destroy this mage tower and then if I've got enough movement I could wind my way around here and maybe I can end up at the monastery you know, round the top or even reveal a new monastery on a new tile. That's what I'm thinking, rather than going through those forests at night and not getting as much for them. It is 12, it's 12 movements, isn't it, to get to them. It's now that I wish that I had <laughs> Goldix's uh, skip two things spell, but I haven't had a chance to get that yet. So. Ooh, a reprint is coming for Imperial. So I'm told. I'm feeling Mage Tower. I would check the spell out. Oh, because I get a spell, don't I? If I fight them. Because the, the, the other spells that are available are just ranged fire attack 5. Not going to be so good because they're going to be fortified. And then demolish is ignore site fortifications and enemies get armor minus 1. Which is great things, by the way. Um, if, uh, if you're fighting like a castle and stuff and you're fighting a load of other things. So I think... What, what do we reckon for influence then? That's the decision for this turn. I can... I, I feel like maybe I should save the concentration to maybe boost my um, ranged attack in case I need 7 or something like that and in case I don't draw anything. 
to help me. I definitely want to keep magic talent. So I won't recruit peasants, more peasants. I will influence influence 2, influence 5. I have to use the march, unfortunately. That's influence 6. And then I can spend that influence 6 just getting rid of those two wounds. Right? They can go back up. That's, I think, the move. And then I could always use the peasants to move if I need to get over to the mage tower. So they stay here. My hand limit is still six because I'm next to the keep. I would go attack tower, recruit. Um, what are what would you recruit? Oh, if if, if oh yeah, both of, well, these are monasteries, aren't they? Not. I don't think there's anyone. Does, do do more people come out? At the mage tower, I don't think we can recruit. Go. Okay. The, the recruiters, I think we can only recruit um, Monastery and Village at the moment. Just check in case. Where's the mage? Here it is. Yeah, you, you, do, um, you do recruit people here, don't you? I, I think we had a, a unit earlier that you could recruit there. But we just skip that, skip that step. Attack tower, attack orc. Destroy everybody, and then explore around. That is the plan, I think. So what have I um, drawn here? Mana draw. Use an additional mana die. Or take a mana die and then... Set it to any color except gold and gain two mana tokens. Woo! <laughs> and I can heal another one. Good to have in the wings in case I need to heal that other wound that's hiding around in here. And March might get us to the Mage Tower. Let's take a little breather from <laughs> that. It's, it's what is um, amazing about Mage Knight, and sometimes can be, um, it, it can just be mind boggling that all I did in that turn was just heal two wounds. And there's so much like, but I could do this, but I could do this, but I could do this same thing, but I could go this different way about it. Okay, there's a little bit of a worry. I've used a lot of cards in my deck. But um, Goldix has finally found green, so he's going to draw two extra cards. But back to me. Back from being uh, that zoomed in. <laughs> I should change that dummy, uh, dummy player camera. It's way too zoomed in. Back to this. Maybe I should. What do you reckon about having chat on the screen? I reckon that the font size needs reducing. And maybe, uh, maybe we don't have it at all. I don't know. If if YouTube displays the the chat replay, it is nice to have in there for people watching back in the future and stuff. And for some reason, I can see messages there before they come up in YouTube's uh, live chat. So it's me again, isn't it? We're charging into this mage tower. No idea what's in it, but we're charging forward. I think the tranquility might even. The Tranquility might even have to be played. Oh, or I could do I could do Mana Draw. You can use an additional die because I'm going to use the white on a spell, I think. And then I can use the green on the march so I can move four and not have to waste a card because I feel like I'm already going to have to discard Tranquility to play a spell. What do we reckon? Or I just do move two. Or I just do move two and then use the peasants to move two. Because they're not going to be attacking or blocking in this, but maybe they'll be good for fighting the orc in a minute. Hmm. Well, I don't have to use the mana draw yet, do I? 
if we're going to move over there. Yeah, we either use a mana die to move, or we don't use the mana die yet. Move two, move two from the peasant. Draw card first. What card? Oh, we could play Tranquility to draw cards. Yeah, we could, we could draw two cards from Tranquility. Do you have a fair few cards left? But one of them is a wound. That we could then stick around and use, um, and use cards to heal. So we don't have to move yet. The big thing of this round is going to be the taking of the Mage Tower. You reckon draw two cards? I'm going for it. We're using a Mana Die. Yes, better to be prepared. We've used the Mana Die, we've used Tranquility, we're drawing two cards. We haven't found the wound. And we're not going to have... Um, Dice to do this, I don't think, but we found Swiftness, which uh, is good for some more ranged attack. And Rage is just good for plain old attacking. So I don't think we should wait around any longer. I think we should move with March. And Peasants, I think. Go over into the Mage Tower and find out what we're facing. Quite, quite alright, isn't it, really? If I flip to my other camera, Poison, if a unit gets wounded because of an attack from an enemy with poison, it gets two wound tokens instead of one. For each wound a hero takes from a poison attack, he also puts it to his discard pile. That would be Something to worry about for sure. If I was worried about that attack, but I'm not at all. I do have siege attack from uh, battle versatility, but I'm not going to do that. This is already sorted, right? Because I, I have my great big move planned. I'm going to do magic talent. Discard a card from your hand. I think that's going to have to be. I'm going to have to do Mana Draw first, which lets me use an additional die from the source. Have to do that, right? Then I'm going to do Magic Talent, discard a card from your hand to be allowed to use a spell. Have fun conquering the world. I will. Hopefully we'll get there. Thanks for joining me for now. See how it turned out later. Maybe rather than discarding Swiftness... I could discard Rage, but maybe Rage is going to be good for fight. Yeah, Swiftness has got range attack, hasn't it? I'll discard Rage with Magic Talent. That lets me use a spell. And the spell is going to be Expose. It stays where it is, but just so I can show you. Uh, target enemy loses all fortifications and resistances. My second die, which I'm allowed because of the mana draw. So that's... It's not fortified anymore, so I don't have to use Siege Attack. And... It's got no resistances or whatever if it did have them. It's just, an, it might as well just be a marauding enemy with block five. And I've got ranged attack two right there. I don't even need to play concentration, which is lucky because I haven't got any more mana <laughs> to use concentration, which was the original plan. Um, oh, here we go. Here's me. So concentration is going to have to stick around. Battle versatility, which I can play thanks to having a red crystal. These crystals stick around. I can do ranged attack 3, plus the 2 from the spell is ranged attack 5 on the enemy. It's lost its fortifications and everything, so that is a mage tower conquered. Which is great that that's worked out. Uh, so that's going to give me uh, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 on the old fame. And what else does it do? Yeah, when revealed, oh, we need reputation minus one. Then, 
gain a spell as your reward. So I could take that spell. It's only one enemy, so it's not going to be as good fighting things later on. Oh, oh, this is a better view to see the spells, isn't it? This is clearer. Ranged fire attack 5, just having about. It would be great if I could see what the dice were going to be, but we've got to wait for that. So I gain one of these spells. Ignore sight fortifications. So this is all fortifications, but not enemy resistance. So it would affect all enemies. Or later, like for a city, when you fight a lot of enemies. Or expose that we've already seen work brilliantly. One enemy loses all of its fortifications and resistances, and you ranged attack too. Or we do a ranged fire attack, which might be necessary later on when you're fighting dragons and stuff and they've got ice block. I'm going to go for expose. I really like expose. It goes on the top of my deck, right? Check that in the ice play guides. Uh, top of your deed deck, same as if you'd bought. Okie doke. And replenish it. So we found meditation, which each turn we might get to use thanks to magic talent. Uh, meditation, randomly pick two cards from your discard pile and place them either on the top or bottom of your deeds deck. At the end of this turn, draw two cards over your hand limit. And trance is the same as the basic effect, except you choose the cards instead of picking them randomly. So I have played a ton of stuff there. Do I need to mark? Yes, I mark it with a shield token. That I have defeated this mage tower. Da -da -da. You're done with. All of you are done with. Lots and lots of cards played this turn. I need these two dice. Rerolling back in the source. Green. Not ideal that they're both the same, but when you have got concentration in your hand, remember playing the bottom of this is play the bottom of any card plus two. So, not too bad to have green in there. I'm not near a keep, so my hand limit is just five. And I've got to fight that orc next, haven't I? So that's my great big turn. Yep. And then we've got to go to... Where is he? Blurry Goldix. And it doesn't matter what, uh, what his last card is, because he's only got three cards. So he doesn't declare end of turn yet. So I'm going to get a turn, then he's going to declare end of turn, then I get one more turn. Two turns in total, and I've nearly gone through all of my cards anyway. So, if I had, if I had white, I could do this, uh, this spell again, and that's ranged attack two right there. But uh, we, we could just take care of the orc with ranged attack three right here. Maybe I should re-roll the dice, because it's near the end of the round and I haven't used this. I could just play this, gain a white token. Just I don't need range attack 5. Is the thing there, if I'm using, you know, concentrations thing. Maybe. I could use concentration later to get loads and loads of movement. I'm going to do mana search on one of the green, and you have to pick a gold if it's there. See what other colors we can get. White, white. Oh. White, white. Which means... Yeah, let's... Um... What did I do then? I did my uh, mana search, didn't I? So that can, um, that can go back now. You can go out of the game, that's not going to get used again. And now that there is a white die in the source, I can just use that. My action is going to be to stick around where I am. I could try and generate some influence and stuff to get a spell. But for now at least, so I don't provoke the rampaging enemy by trying to walk around him, I am just going to attack him. So he's got three block. I am just going in there with the swiftness. Three swiftness and a mana to make it possible. It's just going to take him out straight away. Which means a reputation. That silence there. That's, that's, that's me being used to... Oh, I'm going to edit this, uh, this out. It's live! Uh, so two fame there. I, I, oh, I took a reputation away. I need to gain a reputation for once. 
for fighting something that people don't like around. And then I gain two fame, which puts me into the next category. And so, my options. We have learning from before. Gain some influence. You can spend influence to gain more advanced actions, either into your discard pile or your hand if you do the more powerful version. Refreshing walk. Move two and heal one, or move four and heal two. Could be good to take now, because it would just... Um, I could use it straight away to get rid of my wound. And um, Mana Storm, which... Have we, have we seen Mana Storm yet? Choose a Mana Die in the source that is showing a basic colour, gain a crystal of that colour, and then re-roll the die and put it back in the source. Or re-roll all dice in the source. You can use three extra dice from the source. Well, I can't in a one-player game. And you can use dice showing black or gold as mana of any colour, regardless of the round. Wow. You know what, though? I am tempted to just do the refreshing walk. There is a green mana about. I could move four and heal next turn. And I do want to move about, maybe um, wind my way over to the monastery to recruit things, probably in the daytime. I feel like I'm going for a refreshing walk. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to gain onto the top of my deck. And, oh, but before I make my decision, what I should be doing is thinking about my, my skills. Let's stay over here. So I draw two skills. I can, of course, have Goldix's skill if I take the learning. I have to take the bottom card if I have his skill. Or... I can... Where's my player aid? Down here. I can have hot swordsmanship. Attack 2 or fire attack 2. Although I've been pretty sneaky, haven't I? I'm doing ranged attacks and stuff and making people lose their fortifications. Or we can have polarization. Once per turn, you can use a mana as a mana of the opposite colour. And so these arrows show you what the opposite means. During the day, you could use black as any... Any colour not black that's not black. You could treat black as gold in the day. <gasps> I'm not even thinking about it. I'm taking it. That's, that's what I'm going for. Do you agree with me? I'm taking the refreshing walk. So this other skill goes into the general supply. We need to fix the... Oh, we've got a firebolt here. Gain a red crystal to your inventory or ranged fire attack three. And then... What next? That's it, isn't it? So, my refreshing walk goes on my deck. That's my... My hand of four. So I only played one card to destroy that orc. Reroll the die in the source. The white and green. And then draw up to five. Oh. But that is going to mean I'm not going to get to play a card. But I'm going to do a great big walk next to because we go to Goldix, going to declare end of round. So I am going to lose out on a card over here. But on my turn, I don't feel like I'm going to get to attack anything. <laughs> and I'm only really going to have uh, exposed to, to attack them with. But I think I'm going to do concentration. Because I can do... I can do concentration with... Shame I can't heal. I could go back to the thing and just... I could go back to the village, just get some influence, and heal this wound. But I'm going to heal it anyway. It's not a shame. Ignore me. Not for everything, just for that. <laughs> I'm going to play Concentration. This lets me play another card for its powerful thing, but add two to most things. So this is going to be... Not, not heal but it can add two to the move. So it's going to be move six and heal two. I've only got one thing to heal, but I'm going to pop that back. Then, um, I can play stamina for some moving, and I'm not going to get to use this, am I? It's the end of the round. So I can do this, so I've got move seven. Hello. Hi. Rach is here. Harry and Marty. We're two and a half hours into the Mage Night Walk. Yeah? And well... 
Where are Marty? Look. He's not there, but... Um, I've got a Marty cam. When it works. Uh, okay. And any time Marty thinks that food might be on the way, <laughs> there. So, we are playing Move 9. Which I might not use all of, but I'm going to see where it gets me, basically. So it's going to be Move 3 out of that 9. I could use Influence and stuff to buy a spell. This is the last turn though, isn't it? I want to move about. So this is probably going to have to be the zoomed out uh, map and we might have to, might have to just move some tiles about just because of the way things have gone. I'm going to move this tile out of the way because if we go back there, I'll put it back. But I don't feel like we are going to go back there. And we need to reveal uh, one of Goldix's abilities if you're interested in that. Uh, his ability here is motivation once around on any player's turn flip this to draw two cards if you have the least fame also gain a green mana token i'm not sure if that's supposed to be in the solo game we're not taking it anyway probably so i need a new tile that i'm going to place there because i want to make my way to the monastery i think so that reveals an orc there so I did three, five. It's two to reveal a new tile. We've got a poisonous orc there. What's, uh, what's he called? Cursed hags. So they're going to try and poison me, but I'm, I'm pretty good with the ranged attacks. But that might... So I've used five movement out of nine. I have a question that I might regret asking. How long is this game? Now, it's taking me longer because I'm learning it myself, and it's complicated, but... I will say, long. I think if you're, if you're Paul Grogan and you love it so much you've played it a ton and ended up designing it, uh, designing expansions for it anyway, uh, it's, it's not quite as long. Like, he's designed a scenario that he's recommended me use in the future where it's just one day and one night. So this is the night. So this would be the end of the game now, which is still taking me two and a half hours, but I'm chatting and stuff and taking my sweet time trying to make a decision. Long, though, I would say. When Rach and I played co-op games of it, like, an all-day affair, not into the night, but I'd say slow as we might be, three-plus hours. It's a long game. Longer than, like, I have, I have dismissed some games out of the collection, ultimately, for being not as long as this. There is something special about Mage Knight, though, and I have, uh, in the past gotten rid of Mage Knight and ended up getting it back again. But the, one of the main reasons I got rid of Mage Knight is the thing that's happened again. End up playing it for, not playing it for so long that I forget how to play it and then have to do all of this again. But I'm enjoying it, especially doing it, uh, the other advantage of doing a live uh, playthrough is get, to, uh, get a bit of chat and stuff going on at the same time rather than as, as, as chatty as Glass Marty can get sometimes. Uh, sometimes he clams right up. So, I've used five movement. It would cost me eight to get next to the orc, and then that's what I would be doing next turn. We do have a new thing over here. If uh, I pop the browser on, and yeah, I'm, I'm doing it slowly like this as well and, review, and showing you these things. We found a monster den. This is the first adventure site. Uh, unlike rampaging enemies or fortified sites, you can completely ignore an adventure site. You can just go and stand on it. As long as you don't say that you're going in there, you can just uh, treat it as if it was empty. You can announce you're entering it and draw a brown enemy and fight it. If you win, mark a space with a shield. It's nothing for the rest of the game. And as a reward, you get two random crystals. Roll spare mana die twice to see what you get. If you're all gold, you can choose what to get. If you're all black, you get fame plus one instead of the crystal. You don't defeat the enemy, you stay where you are, but the enemy is now face up and other people can uh, do it. You gain reputation when defeating rampaging enemies, you lose it when attacking by sites, you get nothing for fighting uh, the monster den because, you know, they're, they're keeping themselves to themselves. They're monsters, so people don't like them, but they're not bothering anyone. Okay, so I've got, I can use three movements to just go there, or I could use two movements to reveal another new tile. 
and I should be gaining a fame for revealing that tile. So, not long enough. <laughs> well, you can, you can play longer and longer scenarios of this. This being the first uh, reconnaissance, it's, um, it's not as long as some of these things are. Let's see, first reconnaissance, two days and a night. It's three rounds. I think, isn't it longer for solo? It's two days and two nights, solo. Uh, and scenario ends when, when a player reveals a city, everyone has one last turn. And if the round ends during this, the game ends immediately. The solo conquest is three days and three nights. It's a, you know, that's, that's full conquest mode. That is a huge one. I don't know if we're going to be getting to that. I am next time I try this out, I'm gonna try Paul's uh scenario that he suggested and designed, where it's a day and a night, and you start off with I, w I watched his uh, playthrough of it last time I learned Mage Knight. I wanna try that as well because you start off with some uh, some special stuff. I think you start off with a skill and advanced action, a spell, something like that. Uh and I might uh, add some stuff from the expansions in as we uh play it again. I don't know when that will be. What what games would you like to see doing live? I'm gonna do a a live video or two next week. Can't do tons because you know I've still got to make normal playthroughs. Got to go to work and stuff uh, in between all of these things. But yeah, do some uh, live things next week. What would you like to see? Okay, I'm using all this to move on. So I've used five movements. I might just go next to the orc. Or do I want to reveal the new tile? It's not going to be a city yet because see this. We can see from the stack it's still green, and the city is going to be on a brown tile. So it's not going to end the game. But hmm, the plan was to go towards the monastery, wasn't it? But it's still going to be three in the data move onto this thing. And then I'm going to have to fight the orc. I'll reveal a new tile. Let's see what's on there. Because it could be a monastery that's closer to me. A Cthulhu Death May Die. I don't have. I don't really know much about it, actually. I don't think that will be next week. Um, hmm. Oh, so we've, seen, we've got our first boggy space over here that's always five to move through. Do we need to reveal something for revealing a ruins? Let's uh, pop on over to... Oh, we found dungeon. Should be. Uh, finally, the dungeon description. No tokens are placed here. This is like an adventure site. You can go in there and fight if you're on its space. And this is where we can get some artifacts for different enemies in here. And there's a monastery on there that's easy to get to. We could just ignore that um, rampaging orc. There's a monastery up there. I have spent three, five, seven movements. I can go on here and I don't have to do anything. I don't have to fight the enemies and just be on there. I need another fame for revealing a new tile. But I think that's it. So the card, I didn't get to play this round because this, this is it now. Uh, with swiftness. So I didn't miss out on a ton. So let's do the end of round business. Pop up the. I'll just pop up the browser for me. Oh, it's. Uh, I'll let you see what I'm actually doing. Make sure that I get all of this right. So flip the Daystroke Nightboard. Reroll the mana dice. Haven't rolled any black, which is great. <gasps> We've rolled a gold, which can be anything. And then unit cards go away and we get some new ones. So show you these as I reveal them. Foresters, we recruited at a village. Move and reduce cost of movement spaces. Utum crossbowmen can be recruited as a keep or a village. Attack or block and some range attack. And the illusionists can be recruited a mage tower, which sadly I've moved away from now. Give you a load of influence. Target unfortified enemy does not attack this combat. 
has to be on fortify. Uh, and then gain a white crystal to your inventory. And uh, if there are any advanced action cards, do we do we get a new advanced action card for revealing an, a mage tower? A, a monastery, that is, isn't it? Where's monastery? When a monastery is revealed, I, I assume we reveal another one. So we get rid of this one, take bottom of the advanced action deck, and so we, we should have two in here, I think. Promise is someone's basic card. That's my basic card. I've been playing with a card missing. Was that always missing? Have I used that this game? No wonder I haven't been able to influence people. Okay, you should count your cards before you play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen. That's how many I'm supposed to have. Whatever point that card left my deck, it shouldn't have. So, reveal new cards for the unit offer. I've done that. Advanced action offer. The lowest one goes into Goldix's deck and we shuffle that and then reveal a new one it's going to be Swift Bolt gain a white crystal to your inventory or ranged attack 4 and spell offer is refreshed in the same way Goldix is going to get himself a red crystal so red is just as bad as green now for advancing his deck more and more. And then we have Wings of Wind. When you play this, spend one to five move points and move one revealed space on the map for each. You must end your move in a safe space and this does not provoke rampaging enemies. Wow. That's good. Okay. So. Oh. I'm about to be coming soon. What am I up to next? We've done that, we've done spell. Shuffle your deed cards. I haven't got any artifact assigned. I refresh my unit. They become ready. Skills that were face down and face up again. And then we draw tactics. Back. Any chat that I've missed? Playthrough of Magna Storm. I haven't got Magna Storm actually. That is one that has kind of always been on the back burner. That oh, I should play that. I haven't got it, but uh, it's got like a persistent thing, hasn't it, between games? I don't think it does get enough love. But I haven't played it to say how much love it should be getting. Um, that burn the monasteries. Yeah, you can you can burn the monasteries, can't you? Yeah. You can burn a monastery as your action for a turn, get minus three reputation, draw a violet enemy token to fight, you cannot use your units for this, and if you defeat them, mark the space with a shield token and get an artifact as your reward, the monastery is destroyed. I would like to play that. I have recently, this will be in um, April's coming up video, which is going to be the big fifth anniversary month. I don't know what stuff's going to happen for the fifth anniversary, because you're limited by lockdowns and stuff over here. But, uh, yeah, there'll be some stuff, but games that I've gotten off the back of my 2019 video, so many comments and uh, in various places and messages saying that I should have uh, played Maracaibo. So got Maracaibo now. And uh, a, a few for Taverns of Tiefenthal, which is just another one that always means to play this, but just never got around to it. But play Taverns of Tiefenthal. Massively, massively impressed. It's great. Right. I believe we are ready to pick tactics for the day. So this is the final day, no matter what happens. There might be another night. Although, it's getting on. I've got to have tea at some point. <laughs> Hour and a half Paul said this to take me. I'm probably going really slow, though. It's including these bits where I'm talking about how slowly I'm going. So, early bird. Just go first. I don't think I'm going to do that. Mana steel. Take a die from the source and put it on this thing and you can use that at any time. 
We'll put a gold on here and just have a gold waiting in the wings. Great start. Immediately draw two cards. Oh, that reminds me. I should. One, two, three, four, five. Have um, my hand, shouldn't I, to help me make this decision. Not great. A load of healing. Once during the day, you can actually take another turn immediately after this. I feel like I might want two more cards. I wanted to go and attack this dungeon that I'm staying in. But I've got improvisation and I've got battle versatility and I can treat things as other things. Oh, we should also have a rampaging in. I'll put this up there. Plan is, I could just walk over to the monastery though, couldn't I? And um, improvisation can be used as influence to go and recruit. The oh, Only the illusionists could be recruited now though, because the, the people change every day. You can go to a monastery though and get these advanced actions. Song of Wind, move two, the move cost of planes, deserts and wastelands is reduced by one to a minimum of zero. Hmm. Or influence, and you can use influence as block. Or ice or fire block. So what's going to help me the most? Drawing two more cards might help me fight whatever's in this dungeon. Yeah, I'm going to... Great start. I'm going to draw two cards. And unless he draws the six, Goldix is probably going before me. He's going early bird. I don't need any of those tactics anymore. And I draw two cards, which movement and stuff. Got so much movement. I have got tranquility where I could draw some more cards. Uh, we haven't got a green mana, but there is a gold die out there. So Goldix going first yet again. I always want the better powers, it seems. And he's drawn white. Still hasn't got any white crystals. So we are fine. What is the plan? I don't know what is in that dungeon at all. I could still go and fight it. Diplomacy is great. Could be used against the violet token should you burn the monastery. Oh, yeah. Because I could go and... I could go and get that... And then burn the monastery. That's probably a much wiser thing than fighting this dungeon when I haven't really got the cards for it. So to get to the... There isn't a green just yet, but I could... There is a blue, so stamina. Player area, don't you? Stamina, move four. If I wanted to, but maybe I want to save my mana for the influence because how much is it to get a is it six? Yes, yeah, six influence to buy an advanced action. Can I? I could get the illusionists there, they're seven. I have got the peasants that can give me a bit of influence as well, and I can draw some cards. Hmm. Yeah, I've got to discard things with this. So Stamina and March would get me there. Onto the monastery itself. And then I could do... Let's see, Improvisation. Needs me to discard a card from my hand, though. Do swiftness. Probably want to keep some move, though. I could do two more move and reveal the next tile. Point of healing is two influence at a monastery. I'm not going to be able to get a unit as well, unfortunately. But I think spend that two extra movement 
to be able to see another tile. Because we're going to have to clear the artifact out of the way for now. But what way does that go? Where's the number? The number is covered up by my finger. Ooh, we have found another new thing. We have found ruins. Read, and, read the ruin description card. Yeah, I should, I should just be doing that rather than flip into the uh, thing all the time, shouldn't I? It is all in here. When revealed, place a yellow token here. Face up if it's day, face down if it's night. Face up, day. While unconquered, you can enter the ancient ruins as your action for the turn. There will either be an altar there, where you can pay some mana to get um, seven fame and put a shield token down, or enemies, which once you can, it's enemies. So draw the enemies depicted and fight them. Any undefeated enemies remain and can be fought later. If you defeat the last enemy here, mark it with a shield and get the reward depicted on the yellow token, which is a crystal of each color, right? Which could be massive for doing things later. But at the moment, we are influencing. I'm going to discard this, get influence five, and then six, seven lets me buy diplomacy. Hopefully, we'll um, draw some more. Influence for next turn because I have used I have just used five cards, so we need new thing in here. It's red again. I draw up to five. Influence, influence, which I can use as block, and I can use a spell card. Are the monasteries fortified? I don't think they are. Right. A violet enemy token, but I don't think it counts as fortified, does it? Does it? I've got a load of influence. Let's let's uh, have some thinking time and go over to Goldix. See what he's doing. Rage crystallize. It's blue. He has one blue token. We flip over. Okay, what's the plan? Are we sticking with doing? Are we sticking with burning down the monastery? I do get an artifact. And I can use influence as block, which is potentially a lot of block. It's just... Can I... I think it's got to be done. Just thinking... I can do, you know, demolish. I can... I have magic talent, so I can use one of these spells and give them armor minus one. I don't think that's going to be that good, is it? Let's burn down the monastery. It's been suggested, so I'm doing it. So what's... So my action for the turn is burn down the monastery. I get reputation minus three. Go, thanks for being here, Aaron. I hope some of it made sense. And you can watch the rest later if you want to. Hopefully, there'll, there'll be a shorter game next time. Don't blame me for needing to go. Uh, so, Reputation minus three and a random violet enemy. We are going to be fighting nothing because it's blended in with the table. Uh, some more poison hags. So, I don't think I can get myself five attack of a kind, but I should be able to block all of this, right? Because. The poison part means if I am wounded, I will get more wounds, but I can make it so I'm not wounded. Because I get influence, right? I can get... Yeah, I have my skill token for influence. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for joining us. You can, you can skip back if you'd like to... I'm still explain things. Maybe you're a mage knight aficionado. 
see where I'm going wrong here. I'm burning down a monastery. Things have gotten desperate. So I've got, yeah, I don't need to do... I can do diplomacy for influence too. You can use influence as if it was block. I can then do threaten for influence too. So that's influence four. And then I have my token for influence six, which I can say is block six. So I have blocked all of its damage, so poison doesn't matter. Then we can move into attack. I need to do attack five. I haven't used a mana yet. We can go to the source, and I'll keep the gold in there because it's got a red. Battle versatility, I can use as attack four. I unfortunately didn't have enough range to just kill it outright. I can do attack four from this, and then I can either use magic talent or refreshing walk. I think I'll use refreshing walk. I want to hold on to my magic talent, I think, as attack one. Or do I use my peasants? I can use my peasants as attack. I think I'm going to use them. I need one more attack. There it is. And then I'll hang on to these two cards. So there it is. I have defeated the monastery. Do I, I still get the four peasant? Oh yeah, I can't use units. Can't use units. Thank you. <laughs> I am being naughty. So I will use my refreshing walk then. Use my refreshing walk. Hang on to the magic talent for now. And do I still get the fame for the enemy? Or is it just the um, artifact that I'm getting? Burning the monastery, doing the combat thing. Put a shield on the monastery, and you can't do anything there because the monastery is gone. And gaining an artifact happens at the end of your turn. Draw two cards from the deck and look at them. Choose one of them and put it on top of your deck. If you ever gain more than one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Using artifacts, it's got a basic effect. You can just play, or you can destroy it. For its bottom special effect, and there are some banners attached to enemies. So I get the four fame. Let's one, two, three, four. For defeating yet another enemy, the savior of Mage Knight Kingdom. And then I need to draw the Atletico Mints is asking a question. Everyone should listen to give Atletico Mints a go. I'm not saying you'll like it. Good chance you'll like it. So I need to show you these cards now. I found some rings. I can either take the ruby ring or the diamond ring. They do a similar thing. Gain a red mana token and a red crystal to your inventory. Fame plus one for playing this. Or you can throw it away. You have an endless supply of red and black mana this turn. Fame plus one for each red spell you cast. Do. Red spell there. Although equally, there's a white spell, and I have already got a white spell. I have more red cards to activate, I think, than white. What do you reckon, red or white? In the meantime, the shield shows us that the monastery, even on that camera anymore, is destroyed. Maybe I should... Let's pop. Oh, not go off the top. Getting quite to the end of that. Max saying red. I'm going to go with red. I'm taking the ruby ring. It goes on my deck. Diamond ring. Bottom of the artifact deck. Then I keep you. You are all gone away. I re-roll the mana in the source, white, then I draw back up to five, and scratch for white for the spell if necessary. Yeah. Not great for doing stuff. I can play a spell from here, but they don't really do much damage. I wanted to go over to the Special, oh, we should have a rampaging enemy there. I wanted to go over here and kill these. I, I can just explore, though, with the movement that I've got for now, can't I? 
drawn a lot of movement. Gold X, what jump to? Two, three. Blue is one more. Still got a fair few cards in his deck, but so have I. I'm going a bit slowly. Although we did play a fair few there. Bold enough. See, this wee guy. So, what is the plan? I can play spells and get a red mana token and a red crystal and a point and keep this. I could just move two and see what's over there. Reveal a new tile. It could be the city. <laughs> it could trigger the end of the game, though. I don't think I'm in a position to go and fight that dungeon, though. Maybe that's what I'd have to do on my other turn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move two, which means, like, again, I'm going to get rid of these bottom two map tiles. We're not going back there, let's face it. And let's reveal a new tile. We have found a city. So this, because it is the tutorial mission, is the end of the game. And you would uh, count up all of your points and stuff. We found <laughs> some terrifying dragons. But uh, they are they are tougher. So go to the the rule book over here. So one dragon has ice and fire resistance. They are resistant to just pretty much everything. The other dragon is resistant to fire attacks and physical things. And get all stuff like cold fire attacks and things. It goes crazy. I'm not even sure that I understand at this point. Okay, so we've got one more turn after this. Is that it? When a player reveals a city, everyone has one last turn. So we got this and then we've got one more turn. Could we fight a dragon? What what is a uh that's not the button. What is a cold fire attack? Only cold fire blocks are efficient. So you can't just use a Oh yeah. I have uh, made a bad decision because if I move onto that ruins now to fight it, I am going <laughs> to provoke the dragon. So I've got to fight a dragon. Only cold fire blocks are efficient. Others are halved. You can't use fire or ice. You have to use cold fire blocks. And that is this turn, isn't it? I am in the turn right now. All I have done so far is moved. If I move more, I provoke an attack, right? But yeah, it is still only an attack six. Could I? Could I? Could I kill it though? With what I have got, I could. Because we've got one more turn after this. I could play from the supply thanks to magic talents, wings of wind, that can for one to five movement points. I can move a space for each movement point. Illusionists are great for dragons. Could I? Unfortunately, I burnt down the monastery. <laughs> I could have recruited those illusionists. <laughs> they are great for dragons. Ah, uh, because you can just make them not attack this combat. Yeah, it would be great. I kind of wish I'd got them now. <laughs> so I can just run away because. The Wings of Wind does not provoke rampaging enemies. Or we could fight the dragon. I don't know that we could fight the dragon this turn, though. I think we'd have to wait. I could do mana draw for now. 
Oh no, that's just, that's take tokens, which isn't that useful. Yeah, if fighting dragons is going to be my big finale. I haven't got the cards for it right now, have I? At all. Got ranged attack three. But, and it's it's not resistant to physical, actually. So that would get through. It's just that, can the red spell help if you use magic talent? Well. Oh. Um, so if I use demolish. Uh, demolish is just ignore site fortifications. Enemies get minus one armor. So I would still need eight attack. I can get, because you can just treat ranged as normal, can't you? So I could do three. Four, five, six, essentially, because they've got armor oh, minus one. I would have to discard a card to do that. Sideways is seven. Yeah. If it, if it was night, the, the ability is uh, play this in the attack phase. So you've still got a block. Destroy target enemy. Everyone else gets armor, armor minus one. Would be great. Yeah, it's daytime. And... Yeah, not a great time. So do I... What are we going to run off to do, though, somewhere else? Just... It'd be nice to find a way of getting rid of these cards, wouldn't it, for now? <laughs> Just run to the city and die fight in the city. Could do that. Could play Magic Talents to do Wings of Wind. To move next to the city, I could put myself in the mines above the city. Mines get you a crystal. Where's that um, pointer card gone? And you turn them on and get a crystal. I could get a red crystal for using this Wings of Wind spell to put me up here. And then next turn we just fight the city. Impossible, as I'm sure that would be at this point in the game. Do you have it? Do you have city fighting in this scenario? If you even have city assault. Flicking through the rule book yeah you're just trying to find the capital there is a city so cities cannot be conquered or entered okay gold units are not used I haven't even gold units okay then so we're not going to a city i need to get rid of some cards though how am i going to get rid of i've already used you to move we've only got one more turn after this i can't kill the dragon with what i've got I could do meditation. None of, it only provokes the dragon if I um, move, doesn't it? I could do meditation, randomly pick two cards from your discard pile, put them on the top or bottom of your deck, and draw two cards over your hand limit. And then that would, and then that would clear magic talent out of my hand, and a card I would have to discard to do it. Say mana draw. And I would get two extra cards next turn. Fight this dragon with. It's a shame I don't have uh, better cards to be able to fight it now. I actually haven't got enough though. Even if I just let it attack through. I haven't got enough. Now I'm going to do... The magic talents. <laughs> Still going, Paul. <laughs> you 
you said Mage Knight was a, a light, quick game. We're nearly over, though. This is the second to last turn where I show you. That I didn't place a Ruins tile. Oh, yeah. Up top. Oh, yeah, I could zoom over to this. It uh, seems cool. So a green and a dungeon enemy. And I would get an artifact for it, which is more points if we're bothered about such things. We're deciding, Paul. This is the second to last turn. I have discovered the city straight away. But at the same time, I have found a dragon and stuff. Oh, is it's over when you find the city? Is this my last turn then? I haven't got another turn. This is just my last turn. Okay then. So I don't think we can do much more than go and fight an orc? Because that one over there's got... What was the wording? <laughs> the wording was... You reveal the city, everyone including the player that revealed it gets one last turn. But maybe it means this last turn. Yeah, let's at least have one more turn and try and kill the dragon. So I was going to play... I was, I was playing... I was playing my uh, magic talent to discard a card from my hand. I will discard... Oh, I want mana draw still. I want the ruby ring. I want swiftness. I can't have everything, though. Because I'm going to use this to play... Where is it? Wing, not Wings of Wind. Meditation, but that's unfortunately going to use the beautiful gold die. And that will let me randomly get two cards from my discard. Do I get to see the cards before I decide whether they go on top or bottom of my deck? Cards are random. It doesn't say that I can look at them. So I suppose have... White mana can be green. Can it? I can look at them. White mana can be green. What's this sorcery I've missed out on? And my skill. <gasps> my skill! I've completely forgot I've got this skill. Yes, save the green die. Thank you. Save the green die and use the meditation. Completely forgot I've had this skill for the whole time. I have a skill. Skill for getting skills. I... draw two. So I've got Diplomacy and Threaten. A pretty formidable combo for blocking. But... Blocking is pointless, right? Because this isn't a cold fire block, and the dragon has a cold fire attack. So I would need 12 block to block it for a start, because I haven't got cold fire block. So I think blocking is out of the question. I think it's going to be try and just kill it. Maybe even with siege stuff, but I don't think that's going to happen, unless I get my spell. And I'm more likely... To get to my spell, if I put these at the bottom of the deck, right? What's brutal? The dragon. So magic talent's been used, that's been used, that's been used. So I've got swiftness and ruby ring in my hand. And they're all discard, they're all discard. Then, if, if I can kill this dragon, you'll buy me a pack of Jaffa Cake. Thank you. What flavour? We tried all of these crazy flavours, Paul. We tried passion fruit. It's always like, that's nice. But I kind of wish we'd just gotten lovely Jaffa Jaffa Cakes. So back up to five... Back up to five cards, plus the two because of the spell that I played. This doesn't look like loads of attacks. Goldix, as if you mattered, <laughs> is uh, drawing three cards. And two extra because of that. Yeah, Lemon and Lime it's, as well. It was nice. It was a little bit different, but 
the same time I thought I could have just had orange ones. The, the orange ones still would nicer. See how cold my tears get in. The mug goes back to black. Still pretty warm though. Okay. You can see my player area. Let's... We're not moving anywhere because we'd provoke him anyway. So let's re-roll the die in the source. Although I've got a gold. It doesn't really matter, does it? Let's bring him down here because he is our objective. I don't know if this is going to be any use, but I might as well play this to get a red mana token and red crystal. Because maybe it'll be useful for rage. But it gets me a fame. I won't get rid of it. I'll just play it. So, red crystal, red token. Make sure I'm not in the way of that. And a fame. 22. Definitely kill it, yeah. <laughs> and then it loses all resistances as well, but I've got no um, magic attacks. So can I kill it rangedly? What's it got? Nine. No chance. Can I block its attack? Probably not. There's probably not really that, that much efficiency I can do with it. I can just take its six attack, which really isn't that bad, is it? It's two wounds for me. And I haven't been great at leveling up or getting much XP or doing much of anything. A lot of thought, though. That's what Mage Knight's about. A lot of thought and a lot of chat. So yeah, I can do concentration because there is just a green mana floating about. And or I could do it. I could do the spell. Target enemy loses all fortifications and resistances. But what does that matter? Its resistances don't affect. Oh, no! Its resistances aren't attacks, are they? No, it wouldn't make it lose its um, cold fire attack. What is Aladdin's least favorite dessert? I don't know. What is it? The spell's probably not very useful. I can do ranged attack 5 with concentration, boosting things up. But then that's it, isn't it? I can't... I, c I, c I can kill it, definitely, because then I can go attack 9. None of this is fire attack or ice attack, so it's not resistant. Yeah, unfortunately, if I had more attacks, I might go and fight the other orcs or something. But I don't think I'm in that position to. Can I... Yeah, so I'm just going to fight that. Oh, wait, wait a minute, though. What's the, the red doohickey? If unblocked, it deals twice as much damage as its attack value. Well, I can't do anything about that. I'm just going to have to take four wounds, right? going to have to take four wounds. But we kill the dragon. I live to tell the tale. And I still have... So that was the attack. I still have crystallize, march, and um, expose. That's, that's my... Oh, do the, the wounds go into your hand? Oh yeah, it's poison that puts them in your discard, isn't it? Oh, and five wounds knocks you out. Close. So I can... Are crystals worth points at the end? I need to give myself... Forget all of this. I need to give myself 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for fighting a dragon, which gives me another command token. I haven't got any more... Uh, I haven't got any more units because I was burning down monasteries <laughs> rather than being nice to the people there. So that's, uh, that's up my hand limit. Oh, wrong button. My hand limit. And then if you use crystallize on the red... Man, oh, this. You have a... Oh, because red can be blue. What? 
if a, a wound on your peasants is less than in your hand. Okay. That's all the that's all the peasants have gotten to do this game is take wounds. <laughs> Uh, if you use crystal, I think they did. They did help me move too. I think in the night time. Uh, so if you use crystallize on the red mana, you have a pair for one fame. I think I've used this. To, do you mean the token? I've used the token on uh, rage, kill the dragon. Although I could have, oh no, uh, I, I could have used the spell and march as two attack instead of using the token. And then I would be able to pay this, which gives me a red crystal. Is that what you meant? You had a red mana token when you, oh, it's a, the mana token crystallize you. I think, I think we're on the same page now. So there's three wounds in my hand. There's all of that. I've done my action. It doesn't matter if I had any more cards to go and fight more things. You get one action per turn. Then I need to find the sneaky card that's got. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if you have. Um... You've got to have scoring, haven't you? Because you can do this competitive. The even first recon. Standard achievement scoring. Whoever has the most fame wins. Well, Goldix. I don't think you're going to be getting this. Hey, Hexy Beast, it's going very well. Well, yeah, just kill the dragon. It is going very well. Ignore all of this. It's going beautifully. So. Oh, where's the... I just had the scoring thing in my hand. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. So. The greatest knowledge... I assume you don't have any of the majority stuff in solo, do you? Or like whoever has the most of all of this stuff. Where well, it's just a big, big long list of all of the end game scoring things. Is it in the walkthrough that I should still be going through? Played her in full conquest and I did twenty two wounds in my deck. What is that? Is that is that a skill that she can take? Where she likes wounds a lot. Throw away up to two wounds. Oh, they go into other oh, heroes. Oh, yeah. Once a turn, discard a wound token to gain a red or black mana or a non wound card to gain something else. Once a turn, you can play a wound sideways as if it were a non wound card. Wow. <laughs> he didn't win. Right, let's, let's get to the. My genuine walkthrough rather than this online one I've been using. The online one which I realised at a certain point is uh, for the Ultimate Edition. So the card numbers it was telling me <laughs> aren't the same. Uh, so, Grace's Knowledge, it's... I should separate the stuff out of my deck, shouldn't I? So there's some wounds. That's... So all of this is basic stuff. I think, Paul, at for at least a portion of the game, I didn't have one of my cards, one of my basic cards as well. I don't know how long that was a factor for, but there was definitely a Dragon Lady card, promise it was, was uh, in the Advanced Action stack. I don't know if it was there from the start, who knows. So I have, in terms of your spells, so two fame for each spell. I have one spell, so that's two fame. Then, a fame for each advanced action. Got three of those bad boys. So, one, two, three. The greatest loot, two fame for each artifact. I've got one. That's a couple. And a fame for every two crystals. Ah, that's why you need the second crystal. And the player who scored the most fame this way, and all that. The greatest leader, for fame equal to the total level of all your units, wounded units are only half rounded down. So I have a wounded level one, which is worth nothing. So that's only lost me uh, a point. Whereas, I'll see wounds in a minute. 
Can I score the most fame this way? The greatest conqueror, two fame for each shield token you have on a keep, mage tower, or monastery. Well, that is six, isn't it? I did a keep back here, a mage tower back here. We did, uh, <laughs> I, I did at a certain point destroy the, ma <laughs> the beginnings of the map. It was a great earthquake, don't worry about that. That's two points for each of them, that's six points. Uh, 45. The greatest adventurer. Two for each shield token and an adventurer site. Not done no adventuring. And the greatest beating, lose two fame for each wound in your deck. Well, I got three of those. Uh, one, two, three. And there we go. Whoever has the most fame is the winner of the first scenario. Well, I think we can 100% say that I beat Goldix in this. He didn't even remember to bring his scoring thing. Full conquest? Co-op conquest, surely. How long would that take? That would be a... <laughs> Maybe if, if, if Rage didn't want to come to Ridcon or was at school or something. Maybe. <laughs> what would Rage do for all of that time? Well, maybe she's up for a, maybe it's been long enough that she's up for a full co-op. How does, because I know that full co-op is only three players, right? But it says that because you need the dummy player. But now there's a load of, now there's a load of um, extra characters. Do you play like four, four players? Three players, once you know the game, is about six hours. <laughs> We've gone three and a half hours here, but that is uh, blathering and learning all of the stuff. I remember at, at some point, I we, we definitely did a full co-op. I, I don't know what we did or what score we got. We definitely played it to the end. But yeah, just, it took all day. It definitely took like four... Four hours, I would say. It was one of the best gaming experiences I've had. Yeah, it would be <laughs> absolutely crazy. Yeah, B Vlader at his own game. So there we go. That is the first reconnaissance. Just a quick, <laughs> a quick stream to get used to Mage Knight. And then the rest of it is uh, it's just going to be a breeze from here on in, isn't it? Yes, it is definitely worth the time. It has not felt like three and a half hours. I can't say that <laughs> for everyone watching, but uh, for me it's been very, very quick. But Paul taught First Recon live very quickly, he was telling me. Like one and a half, two hours did it end, Paul. But you were teaching them and... You didn't have to, like I did, keep going, what's that? Oh, what, what was that again? Time is irrelevant. When you're enjoying a board game, time is irrelevant. But yeah, I could, I could be having things as well. There's, there's plenty of great player aid things on um, Board Game Geek for just like quick tables. For, it is all on the rulebook and stuff. But just so it's like right in front of your face or on your phone or something, there's nice little tables for combat. There's full reference things as well, because I'm sure adding all of the expansions in and stuff adds plenty more keywords and stuff. I don't know yet. As I was saying earlier, I've never played any of the expansions. I do now own all of the expansions, so we're going to get the stuff eventually. We'll see. There is a, there's no need for player raids. The cards are good. Yes. All of this stuff is explained right in front of you. And it is only like a little table that's got all of this in there. I've never played with, uh, with any of the expansions, but eventually we'll get there. Next step is an actual game, because this, is, this isn't really a game of it, is it? This is a uh, kind of scripted. You know, it's still random in the cards that you get in, the character that you're playing. Uh, the units that come out, all of that is still just um, variable. It's just that it's pre-scripted the order that these things first come out in so that they can be explained to you 
as and when you need to. It's a great way of learning the game. But the Blitz, the Blitz Conquest the, is... That, that's Paul's scenario, right? That's the one you were telling me about? Where it's like one... Oh, Shades of Tesla isn't in here now. It's, uh, it was hastily put into the other room. It's, how's the Marty Cam going? There he is. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I don't know at what point I would feel ready to expand Mage Knight. At, w at what point I feel like I have mastered it enough. It's going to have to just be... Go for it, isn't it? Blitz Conquest is from the base game. Let me have a look. Yeah, yours is the mega quick one, right? And in your scenario, you start with stuff, don't you? I was talking about that earlier. You started with, you've got a choice of some spells, stroke skills, stroke uh, advanced actions, haven't you? Blitz Conquest, short scenario that has most of the mechanics, but is just faster. You start with a fame whenever you cross a line on a fame. So every, every line on the fame track is reduced by one. You start with plus two reputation. There is one more die in the source and one more unit in the offer than usual. When all cities are conquered, all players have one last turn. But you've got to do it in two days or two nights, and then standard scoring. I do like the idea of starting at a boosted level as well. Mines lover, is that in... Oh yeah, it must be. You've got the base game, haven't you? Yeah, I think I've only done first recon plenty of times, and then probably straight into full co-op. I don't know if we even did blitz co-op. This was many years ago now, though. Druid Knights Dungeon Lords. Loads and loads of scenarios built in to the base game. But thank you for joining me. If you've been here <laughs> the long haul, as I have. Oh, yeah, there's, there's like a solo scenario book and stuff on, um, on BGG as well. That there must be tons of... There's, there's like player-made characters and stuff all over Borgen Geek as well, I think. Like, yeah, there's, there's definitely a game that's been out long enough and has a, uh, a, a big enough, rabid enough fan base that it's got some great creative people making some crazy stuff for it, which is how you, which is how you got involved in it, right, Paul? You are one of those fans. You lost us World War II. Oh, I'm going to start disappearing from photographs. Straight into Volker. He's, he's in the Lost Legion, right? I've never played with, uh, with him or any of that stuff, but I do have it now. But the plan is to make a path to that eventually. But yeah, some kind of proper scenario next. Hopefully soon enough that... I remember this stuff. Don't want to let it get like nine months or something <laughs> since the last time that I played it. And I'm like, I, and I only did a walkthrough then. So at, uh, at a certain point, very soon, next month, probably, I'll come back with some more Mage Nights. There will be more live streams in the meantime. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but there will be some more live. There'll be at least a big live game next week. I'll decide something on Monday, what, what days I'm actually here to do that and what game it's going to end up being. I haven't got to film normal playthroughs and stuff. I in uh, normal things coming up. What's, what's ready to be edited now? We need to edit Anno 1800. We need to... What's the other one that I filmed that was uh, requested? Fields of Arla at Tea and Trade is the vote that won this month. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Yeah, what two-player game are we going to do, Paul? We can do, like, we can do some big shared online thing, but now we are both here for, like, we're both set up for physical things. Light's a bit bright on that side, isn't it? That needs sorting. But that's, that's what all of this is for, isn't it? Another kind of four hours of preparation. Oh, two-player Mage Knight? Yeah. How do we do that? Would we do that on Tabletop Simulator? Or we both have it out? That would be it. All right, how long do you reckon two-player is? But I managed. We probably have to start a little bit earlier. Or just do an all-night one. But I managed four hours, no problem. I don't mind. We should definitely do that. It is special uh, anniversary month next month as well. So we should celebrate it with 
a great big two-player mage knight. What's different in cooperative? You can fight... Can you fight general things together? You can fight cities together, right? But... Uh, hello. Hello, Smacky Paps. I Lynn Gaia Project. Gaia Project is amazing. There will be more Mage Knight. Don't be too intimidated. It is crazy, complex, massive, long game, but it's doable. The, the walkthrough breaks it into little chunks. Watch back this if you didn't see it and get through some bits, maybe. But uh, you'll see how, uh, how it all comes together in the end. Uh, but a, a few people did comment on that as well. When it's come up in uh, votes before, like, I've got Mage Knight or I've been meaning to get it or play it or something and it's uh, intimidated. Yeah, it's... I can definitely see that and definitely at that point, at one stage, but it's still crazy complicated. But you can get through it. Yeah, there is a digital version somewhere, isn't there? Somewhere along the line there will be, I'm sure. But yeah, with with um, but you 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 did you did your pl your playthrough on Tabletop Simulator, Paul. So are are CG okay with that before their version comes out? Then I imagine that's what I, I always wonder. Like, unless it's I've only ever done Praga on Tabletop Simulator because like it had come out recently and Delicious had said. We're okay with this. Yeah, we could, we could probably do a real game, right? Of just how we did um, Halito. Where uh, we can just have it set up and just one player has the shuffled things and decides what's coming out. What is different in co-op? I'm not going to fight you, Paul. You know me. But that is extra, isn't it? Like actually fighting people. Yeah, there's a variant where you fight each other, fight the mage knights. Otherwise, it's just being the most efficient and stuff. I wonder who would win that. Yeah, we will do that. We'll arrange it, Paul, for big anniversary April. Big, great big mage knight. I need to go as well. We need to go to the shops before we're ready for tea. <laughs> and I was meant to come off when I, as soon as I finished the game. Thank you very, very much for watching this. Like to help me keep making things only available for this because of Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. Oh, it's awkward trying to get your fingers to point to things on screen. Uh, any support there will be massively appreciated. Thank you so much for everyone who supports and for watching this a second of it. Thank you very much for that. I hope you enjoyed whatever you were here for, whatever you watch in the future. I'll be back for more live things. I'll be announcing them on Twitter and stuff. They'll be scheduled on YouTube. You will see them. I'll make sure of it. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs>